You want a piece of me, boy? Nuclear launch detected. Welcome back to the StarCraft 2 Nation War Season 4, where we are getting ready for the final match of this year. Nation Wars will continue, of course, in 2017 with the remaining groups and then eventually the quarterfinals and obviously the best, we'll say for last, the offline semifinals and finals, but that's far into the future. For now, all eyes will be on USA versus Ukraine. How are we feeling about the home nation? I am feeling so pumped right now. <laughs> I mean, I did, I did like guess four three because I actually thought Neeb would do that thing that he did against the Muslim, where he'd lose first against mm -hmm. Taren and then be like, "Nope, actually, I have it." But instead, he just four zero, which is like so much better. So I'm super confident going to the next one, even if Bly four zero them yesterday. I think Neeb's back in form. Yeah, today is a different day. What happened yesterday doesn't really matter. Can Ukraine do it again, or is it going to be the USA this time? Take another look at Ukraine. Of course, a team full of veterans, but with one uh, player being the absolute star right now. Once upon a time, it's kind of cute, actually. Bly was like, a, uh, I wouldn't say the underdog, but he was absolutely not the star in this country. You know, he was always overshadowed by guys like Dimaga, by Cass, by Whitera, uh, and that other Protoss player whose name I always forget. But slowly but steadily, Bly just never gave up. He kept on grinding, and he went from just being a good online player to being a good offline player as well, and now absolutely the star of this nation yeah exactly um i guess you guys were talking about it while i was on the couch but that it might be like Bly is like in the winter as tasia was the yeah. summer that might just be it so of course i still think there's going to be good games that are shown especially when it comes to Bly versus knee but uh, uh i have hope for the usa well, USA looked great. I really want to see Nathanius in action. I mean, it was cool to see Neep all kill and all, and I always get a little warm inside when I see a Protoss win four games in a row. That's the way I like it, but I want to see my boy Nate, man. I think so far he's had a good showing, you know, both games that he played. I think the TVP on Newkirk could have been his, and he had a great start against Bly, especially once those Hellions started roasting drones. So we can, uh, I don't know if we're going to take another look at Team USA or not, but obviously you guys know it's going to be Puck, Neep, and uh, Nathanius, well, we here go. they are. Look at these beautiful, handsome young men. Exactly. Yeah, I guess, you know, Nathanius is always fun to see. He would probably ruin my prediction, though, if I had to guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not a 4-0 if Nate comes out first. But I don't know. Like, it's a question of, well, Nathanius, you brought up, like, the prox or the Reaper Scout. That's really what I thought they were going to do. But then they said, no, I'll just send Neeb out first. It worked beautifully. I would expect that they just let him carry his momentum, basically, in the yeah. next game. Yeah, why not? Maybe make it an 8-0 day for Neep, and in that case, an 8-0 uh, day for USA as well. But we'll see. I think this is going to be a little bit more complicated. I'm not sure how they determine the starting map. Maybe Aromi, my lovely producer, can tell me that. Because that obviously has a lot to do with the strategy, right? Like, if the first sure. map would be whirlwind, then maybe they'll say, like, well, you know, maybe Pock, you want to go first, and... Yeah. yeah, I mean, they brought up, you know, the whole, like, you know, Athena said that he, you know, bit the bullet of habit sensation. <laughs> you don't want to face Bly in a gold-based map. So, if you know, that is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. That might happen again. We just don't know what the first map is. No, we'll know it soon. I guess we can take a look soon at the predictions as well. What did you predict the previous map? Uh, for the previous yeah. series? Yeah, the previous I think series. I predicted a 4-3, as I said. Like, I expect yeah. them to go down and then just, like, bring it back for the all-kill. Yeah, I think I had 4-2, but I didn't know that Neep was going to start. If I knew, I did have a feeling as well that, you know, yesterday, yes, you know, Neep didn't look as good as he's done in the past, but I was like, that happens once. But today, I kind yeah. of expected to see a different Neep. And so far, we have been seeing a different Neep, a much better one. Yeah. Makes the Americans happy. We've been getting a lot of tweets as well. Did you see the tweets? I did, yes. Most of them are amazing, especially that face swap one. Mm -hmm. It totally looked like paid. Yeah, it, it, did. it did, right? Yeah, it wasn't crazy. All right, I believe that the captains are ready. So we're going to have another interview with Nathanius and Bly. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Roddy and Zombie. Here I am with uh, the mighty moment. How are you doing, mon ami moment? I'm really happy to be here. It's very so nice to be uh, here for the interview in, with you, my friend. Yeah. I love you. And I know, I know that, uh, that the English audience really enjoyed uh, your casting last year. And uh, I think you're, you're just a gr legit great guy in general. So I'm really happy to, uh, to have you along my side. Uh, do we have the captains yet? All right. Uh, so, uh, well, let's introduce those captains. You know all about them. Nathanius and Bly. <laughs> Nathanius is getting even more stuff on his screen. This is getting out of control. Get that eagle out of the way. The we sniper. Can, we can't see anything. Okay, what is he drinking? Mountain Dew? 
It has a bald eagle on it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I see. I see where this is going. Um, how are you guys doing? I know it's a really, really dumb question, but I really do want to know. Nate, how are you doing? Obviously, I feel great. I managed to go an entire match without embarrassing myself, and now I'm ready to do it all over again. <laughs> all right. Uh, what about you, Bly? Uh, you feel you feeling okay? You feel like you can do a 4-0 again? Uh, first, first of all, I'll help him to get embarrassed again. And uh, That's nice of you. Uh, yeah. And the second one is... Uh, I felt yesterday, like, uh, it was very close. I made a few mistakes, and I managed to get into the loser's bracket because of this. So I have to come back today with full performance and for zero again. So you, you're feeling really bad about losing against, uh, against Norway? You think it was your fault, like, totally your fault? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't be so hard on you. You're playing amazing yeah, this you tournament. Play very well. Yeah, but still, I could play better. Okay, I got one question for Bly. Uh, uh, you see Nib playing very well. Uh, are you afraid about Nib? He, he did a 4-0. About Nib, never. Okay. Well, what, what, what is it going to be? Like proxy hatcheries? Like, <laughs> what are you going to do to him? I mean, the thing is, Nib is macro player. Uh -huh. I am a cheese player. So, uh, let's see if you can get to macro stage. Uh, Nate, did, did, did you do something with Neeb? Like, did, 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 you, did you tell him to be afraid of this guy? He seems like he doesn't get how dangerous Bly is. Oh, I, you know, I, we were talking about this in the first interview today. My boy Neeb just, for whatever reason or another, his chakra wasn't aligned yesterday. But he's feeling good today. He came in. He wanted to start against Australia. He told me he needed to exact his revenge. And I, I, think, he's, I think he's just going to play a much more... Uh, put together a uh, match today, and I think he should be more than fine against Bly. Whoa. I got okay. one, I got one question for you, uh, Nathanes. Are you, yeah. are you ready for, for a win uh, some match today? <laughs> I'm, Finally? Uh, I, I am prepared. You know, I, I have to say, coming into this Nation Wars, I actually do really like yeah. my Terran versus Protoss and Zerg, so I didn't want to play versus Australia because, naturally, two Terran players that Just my, it's a really bad matchup for me, but uh, you know, assuming I don't have like an epic choke after I kill 30 drones, I, I think I could have a pretty good game against uh, Ukraine today. Yeah, you did kind of well yeah. against Bly, to be honest. It was probably one of the closest game when you guys played uh, before in the opening match. So, so <laughs> Bly is actually like, look at this guy. Did you have any comment? Did you? Don't you think that's true, Bly? Uh -huh. Who was the most dangerous American last time? I, I just want to say to Silvano Bono, who was asking like to don't be too hard on him. Don't be too hard on Nate. Yeah. <laughs> Because you, you're gonna make him look like a fool, or what? What is this? Like, I already look like a clown. Do it. <laughs> it was a good game. You killed some drones. You made some good moves. But then no units. Yeah, and then I froze like a deer in the headlights. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you did well with your Raven, Nate. Uh, I think that, that was quite impressive. But yeah. uh, like from what I can tell from this interview, there's only one thing that could happen. So I'm actually going to ask the question. Nate, who's the first player for USA? And you have only right, one right answer, actually. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, I really wanted to go. But uh, my boy is on a roll. And he asked me. He All said, right. Nate, I'm going to break your legs if you don't let me play. So it's going to be Neeb. It's gonna be Neeb, so that, that, that's not yeah. what I anticipated, but okay. Neeb on a roll, just gonna go for another game. I hope we see you play anyways, Nate. Uh, Bly, who's gonna be the first player from Team Ukraine? Dimaga. Oh. We He was asking to play yet. first. I won the first, but Dimaga was like, uh, can I play please? Can I? <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. Is this because like he's older than you, you, you have to uh, listen to what he says? Uh, he wanna play, really, and I played quite a lot yesterday, so I let him play. Okay. I yeah. can do for zero after. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay, confident words. Pro no problem, and not that much faith in your first player, but that's okay, I guess. Uh, thank you guys for this interview. That was really nice talking to you, and I guess uh, good luck, have fun. USA versus, uh, versus Ukraine is going to be a great match. Good luck, dude. Good luck. Thanks. So what do you think? What kind of ball gonna go on the arrow eight? 
Uh, um, between both. That's actually, yeah, yeah, I know what you're trying to do right here. Uh, I'm going to go with Ukraine. Okay. It's going to be Ukraine. I believe in a, in a, in a good result <laughs> going from Ukraine. Blay. I think Blay is too much on fire. You agree with me? Mm, I think so, yeah. Okay. Blay. With, with ca what kind of style? 21 drones? Yeah, 21. I think it's the best one. Uh, cheesy, it's the best for win and uh, get out uh, for night. For yeah. Go to the club uh, very quickly, you know? Oh, so, okay. Blay, let's go. Uh, good luck. He wants to go to the club, 21 drones. It is. Uh, we'll see who takes it between USA and Ukraine. And yeah. with that, let's get back to the casters. Let's go! Oh. Mar marvelous guys marvelous great interview i loved everything about it not sure what my favorite moment was it was either bly's face when you know they said like your game was really close right and the then, closest and then he's like no the closest and then bly just went oh or uh, nate's background that he just keeps leveling up i'm not sure what more can he add maybe like a pickup truck i feel right a wall i suppose something that's missing <laughs> oh, right <God>. now <laughs> i'm not sure if we want to get into that one but. oh All yeah right. it's pretty american already yeah I'm pretty confident about my score, though. I don't know. I don't know what's up with Funka, man. I don't know what's up with both of you, actually. Wait. Oh, no. You, you know. Okay, yeah. What's up with Funka? Not believing in USA. Uh, I can't betray my, uh, my second home country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah what's up with you? Both of the cast is predicting Ukraine to win. Everyone got a lot of faith in Bly. Bly obviously went on a sick roll yesterday. He was 7-0 and zero up one point. Then in the end, he lost two games against Newt. So Bly is looking very good. But Neep today... Neep looks like Neep again, and yeah, that makes he, me happy. He does. But, I mean, I, I guess it was against the two other races, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Like Taren and Perdoz. So maybe it is not just Bly, but it also maybe is a little bit of Zerg. But it sounds like he is ready to get his revenge by asking to go out first again, which I'm so glad he did. So glad the captains are like – I guess the captains today are, like, letting just, like, the players kind of be like, oh, what do you feel like? Okay, then. You yeah, can I, go. I don't think that Nate wants to get on the wrong foot with uh, Neep. Neep is like, can I go first? And he's like, no, it's going to be me. <laughs> First map is going to be Whirlwind. That's the map they played yesterday as well. And that obviously was the game with the Nidus network after oh, both yeah. oracles died. It was a very... Uh, it looked a little clumsy, right? He tried to say one oracle, then the other oracle died. We got a whole bunch of other stuff. Get the votes in, guys. Hashtag UKR win if you think Ukraine is going to win. Or hashtag USA win if you think that USA is going to win. And last but not least, keep the tweets coming. How are you supporting your home country? Hashtag NW4. Or how are you enjoying the games on what for some nations already is Christmas Eve? Yeah, that's true. Well, it's game number one in the top left on Whirlwind for Ukraine. He is the Blue Zerg Damaga. Now we're on the right bottom side of Whirlwind, representing the USA's 4-0 today. Can he make it 5-0? This Neep. Pretty crazy opening, by the way. Like This is just here recrafting, right? But if I was Neep, did he? Oh, no, never mind. For a split second, I thought it yeah, was uh, right. Nexus first. And I was like, man, that'd be so risky going Nexus first. Because I love Dima, but Dima didn't didn't look that uh, good yesterday. No. So there's absolutely no need for a player like Neep to roll the dice here and go Nexus first. But he didn't. So. Well, it would have been actually super interesting because that is what he did against Blind. We were mm -hmm. just sitting there going like, oh, how in the world would he possibly do that? So for me, I would expect Damaga... Um, well, I, I guess, like, depending on if he knew the map or if he just felt confident in general, but basically, Damaga might actually look for the same opportunity that Bly had with the Nidus from something more mid-game than the more obvious, I suppose, early-game cheese on Whirlwind. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very different this time. Neep does have the wall up on top of his ramp. I don't think he had that yesterday. I think it was all on the low ground. Um, and obviously, well, it's going to be a target again, so maybe, but I'm not expecting Neep to lose both Oracles, and I think Oracles <laughs> could have made a massive difference. And I think yeah. overall, Dimaga is, you know, a pretty different player than Bly, but I also think that Dima is real enough to, you know, look at this matchup and be like, all right, if I'm just going to sit back and let Neep get four bases, the chance I'm going to win here is very small. So I'm expecting something funky, but I'm not necessarily sure what. Yeah, well, I think, again, if you really do see the same opportunity, like the Stargate opener into, like, this quick third base and really that, like, the later gateway uh, addition, then, yeah, you should totally try and go for it. But uh, we don't know really what Damag is thinking here. He might try and take him on on a macro game if he really thinks that he's that confident in ZVP. But I, I agree. Like, I don't think Damaga um, looked that great yesterday. And then, of course, Neeb. Um, you know, maybe yesterday you saw him go down once and you're like, okay, there's actually like a weakness in knee, but today you saw him go 4-0, so I don't think you're actually thinking there's a weakness. It's going to be once again the Oracle opener, and once again, kind of a late Mothership core for Neep. He's just very uh, happy in 
you know, delaying those a little bit. That's a relatively fast evolution chamber, so there is potential for maybe some link drops in the main or maybe some link bane. He's gonna send a couple of links across the map, but the wall is finished for Neep. Yep, perfect little wall right there. Yeah, the Oracle's gonna send a, be sent across the map. Okay, I was waiting for that second Oracle as well. Neeb does like to do that, and I absolutely agree. I don't think the two Oracles are gonna go down. I mean, Neeb looked very shaky yesterday. Honestly, this uh, the first game of today looked a little bit weird too, but each game is getting better and better, so the micro should be on point with these Oracles right now. Yep, there is nothing here, fortunately, for uh, Dimagan. Not a single drone either. Does he have Spore Crawlers? No, he does not. Not a single Spore is up yet, only a single Queen. And Neeb knows that if this one queen, he can get quite a few drones, and that's exactly what's happening. He's not even pulling the drones away. That means eight, nine dead drones wow. already for Dimaga. <laughs> he waited till the last second. A little bit of like the second, you know, miss Micah that, right there. He but, can get but, oh, oh, oh my god. Okay, well then. That is a very effective first Oracle. And of course, it lives even though it was weak. Second Oracle is going to come across the map too. Of course, now you're going to expect they're going to have spore crawlers. So the same situation is not going to arise. But uh, it's already looking much better than the last Roland game. Yeah, the good thing for Dimaga at least is that it's cross map whirlwind, obviously an incredibly large map, so even though he lost a lot of drones, he should be able to replace them and eventually still turn this into a game. But it's not a nice way to start off your macro game, because this also knows that you can't really apply early game pressure. There's really nothing he can do about Neep going up to three bases. Yeah, that's very, I mean, I mean he, yeah, he could have tried to make Lings like a while ago, but of course I've replaced now 15 drones, I think, in total. Have gone down as Neve did catch a couple rallying Ooh. forward. Uh, that's a pretty quick spot. I feel it's been yeah. a long time since so I've seen a spire right after that layer finishes. I do kind of like it. You may as well uh, try to get funky over here because I think if you just play a very standard straight up game and you try to go into high draft, I think Neep is too good right now. So maybe try to catch him off guard. Yeah. I mean, we saw Patok with his hidden spire. <laughs> was able to take out Beyond, so. Yeah, right. I guess uh, Spire's the way to go potentially, but that was like the big difference, right? It was like a, it was a hidden Spire. It was a Spire after you made a couple of Roaches or Hydralisk or, or something, right? But this really was just Lings, three bases into that Spire. We have an Overlord drop going into what looks to be the main base. The pylon's already here. We just got that pretty quickly, and it really shouldn't do a lot of damage. But if it keeps Neeb off of thinking of scouting, then yep. that's effective. Exactly. Uh, and there's there just that single target. By the way, it's also nice for Dimaga to know where that target is, because then maybe if he gets a couple of Mutalis out by surprise. Maybe he can jump on top of it. Void Ray is going to shut this down, and the three stalkers should be enough to deal with these links as well. So, so far, pretty much everything that Dimaga did has gone uh, has got shut down. Did Dimaga kill a single unit so far? I'm not even sure. Uh, maybe a scout. Oh, an adept. Okay. Oh, maybe you broke. No, nope, Oh, my kidding. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No Neeb's broke. putting up a clinic so far, but not knowing about the Spire is very dangerous. I also think that Dima is an old school player that's not going to make the three or four, well, let's say six, seven Mutalis and then transition into something else. Like, no, Dima is old school. Once he starts making Mutas, he's probably not going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a pretty old school way to play, but it, it is so surprising. It could be effective too. Neep does already have one Stargate, of course, that if he does oh end up getting the scout off, okay, the Oracle's gonna go down. But at least he has a second one that might be able to get into the main base. But yeah, once he sees the Mutas are out, maybe he can get a second Stargate and actually start that long defensive game. That Voider is probably just gonna die to these Mutas, but it will be the first scout on him. Mm -hmm. I always think of what Nanima once upon a time said. If I was a Mutalisk, I'd like to meet a Void Ray. Well, I think these Mutas will get their wish of meeting the Void Ray eventually. So far, I think the Mutas are still hidden. Is that uh, no, no, First Phoenix he, is on the way. Yeah. yeah, I think he actually got a revelation on the Spire as well in the main base. So unfortunately, the Oracle will die. The Void Ray really isn't that fast. Probably shouldn't get back home, although the Mutas aren't bothering with it. But when his second star gets already on the way, Sag Defense is already on the way. Warp Prism gets entirely unnoticed by the Mutas, so it's going to be able to pull those back as well. Mothership Core is a little bit out of position. Maybe the Mutas can get the Mothership Core, and if he can get just a whole, uh, you know, whole bunch of probes, that would already be nice. But Dima also knows that this was revealed just a little bit too early, so it's going to be very hard to get away with nothing but Mutalis. The first Phoenix is already out, Photon Overcharge as well, second Stargate being warped in. But during all of this, Deep is not forgetting about the late game plan. He's still getting charged as well, which I believe finished up, and he's getting Archons and stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's getting everything. This is not like one of those surprise games where suddenly everything starts like snowball going downhill for Neeb as he's flustered because of the meter transition. No, he's got it a really well, a well time. Uh, the Warp Prism will go down. It's a little, uh, I guess, unfortunate. Maybe he could have survived. But we have seven more mutas. Yeah. Damaga did throw down a Roach Horn, looking like maybe he was going to transition. But nope, back to the mutas. Mm -hmm. Does he have a Bailing Nest? He does. Uh, unless he canceled it. Definitely. Okay. okay, there we go. Um, Doesn't have Bailing Speed, though. Correct? No, I don't think so. He did invest yeah. everything into just the mutas, which, 
you know, if you do start off with 12 and they don't expect it, that can lead into like 20 or 30, and then they really can't get up the Stargate. But Neeb isn't under that pressure. Like, he's very calmly getting up to a good number of Phoenix. Yeah, and he's getting more Phoenixes as well, so he was not falling for the Roach one, thinking that he was going to transition immediately. Uh, Neeb is like, no, there's a very good chance you'll keep building Riddlisk, and that's exactly what is happening at the moment. You know what I would have loved to see instead of the Roach one? Maybe go for an Infestation Pit. Like, if you make nothing but Riddlisk, then try to get that Dream Fungal. Yeah, that would actually be really good. Uh, especially with the Burrow fungal yeah. available too. The Phoenixes are going to tango with the Mutas, and of course, yeah. unless you really mess up the Micro, the Phoenixes should be fine. It's even getting Corruptors. This is so old school. <laughs> I mean, Phoenixes are a little bit clumsy against Corruptors because it just takes so long to kill them. With plus one air weapons, it's a little faster, but it's still kind of hard, especially after they get plus one Carapace. Uh, but Nib, in general, his Micro should be so good that he will make damn sure the Phoenixes shoot at the Middleisk and ignore the Corruptors. Yeah, this is a really old school way to play. And again, it, it might have been a, like enough of a surprise against maybe another Protoss or a different situation, but I really don't think Neve was surprised enough. So not only is he dealing with the air very well, but he's calmly like building his ground army so that we do actually have this situation where him pushing across the map, even though it is whirlwind cross position, could happen and he could move with the army fight. I do like the army movement right now of the Maga as he's kind of finding a couple of openings here and there. The Phoenix count is getting very high though, so he's got to be careful because the Mutalist will eventually be quite committed. The Corrupt count is going to be higher. At the same time, we've got a little Zealot run by, take care of the Queen, took out the Spine Crawler as well. Yeah, it looks like the Warpism died to those Corruptors, so there won't be too much more, but it seems that Neve just like, I think it's been the second uh, Warpism, or maybe it was just run by, but the point is, he realizes that these are still doing damage, and the the situation right now just doesn't feel very good for Damaga. Not much uh, action, I guess, has happened right now, but it just... I don't think he got that much of a surprise, enough of a surprise. There's no other tricks really up his sleeve other than to brute force Muta Corruptor. Man, it would have been great for Dimaga if he could have somehow done something about this fort base of Deep, right? Because then there is a really good chance that yeah. even with Corruptor Muta, he can make this work. But the moment Protoss is on four bases, they pretty much have all the tools. Jeez. Look at the amount of drones <laughs> that have just gone down. 34. Oh, God. That's, uh, that's high. Still 63 remaining, though. And Dimaga is actually getting close to the Phoenixes. Whoa. He gets a couple, but now he should probably turn around. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, Phoenix range is about to finish, too. It's going to make it yeah. really easy to tango with the Muta. So the Corruptors are finally starting to protect them. But as I was talking about, like the main army on the ground is still scary enough to actually come push forward. Okay, so I'm losing the Oracle. is a bit of a mistake. What I would have loved to see is get and see also like 30, 40 mainlings and he could actually just crush into this army and then maybe you could jump on top of a base where you could force the Phoenixes mm. to stay at once. But if he cannot take care of the ground army, this will always become incredibly difficult because these Archons, they just do too much damage in a straight up fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, we do have another, I guess, Zealot hit squad going off to the left side. I mean, Damaga at 63 drones, but having lost so many over the course of the game, yeah, just couldn't afford yeah. those mass banelings as well. Of course, we have the Corruptors on top of that Nexus. Looks like it actually will go down. Damaga's going to commit to this, even though it'll lose him some of those air units. Yeah, losing a lot of them. Both and Overcharge helping out quite a bit there. Where is the ground force of Neve? It's, you know, spin circles. At the same time, there are Zealots everywhere at once. Damaga finally starts producing a couple of roaches to deal with these run buys, but the Corruptors took so much damage that most of them actually have gone down and now these realists will be forced to fight the phoenixes with range ouch yeah exactly with range i mean there's a you know they ran into the mutas accidentally once but of course <laughs> there's no way the mutas chase the phoenix at this point that is going to be a massacre if they're not protected by the corruptors which they're not being protected yeah, the zealots are, are finally cleaned up but they killed both the fourth and the fifth <laughs> i have really a whole lot of corruptors left good effort though by dimaga but in the end it's Neep winning his fifth game on a roll here at Soccer 2 Nation War Season 4. Pretty fun game to start this one off with. Yeah, sure. It was very old school for an old school player, I guess, from Damaga, and he did end up playing that Macro game. But, uh, like, I mean, Macro against Neep, yeah. first of all, but then also that style of play when you can't, as you were talking about, kill that or stop that fourth base from coming. It just doesn't. It doesn't look as good for the Zerg when the Phoenixes are up and the fourth base is up. It would have been awesome if he would have been able to get lucky, maybe with uh, an Oracle pick off, because that one revelation truly revealed it. Yeah. Maybe Neve was already thinking about it, because obviously at the end of the day, the only thing he saw was Lynx. He saw nothing else. Mm -hmm. The gas has to go somewhere, so you always kind of have to worry about Moonlisk a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it was just shown a little too early.
early, and obviously it's safe to say that the Oracles did a little too much damage as well. I mean, 15 yeah. runs makes it hard to truly show up with surprise mutas at that yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. And it was uh, it was more about the surprise mutas, even though Damaga yeah. ended up getting like a decent economy behind it. But look, so we have some tweets coming in coming in about Neeb. No, in the most Doctor Evil voice I've ever heard. What Wait, is he what referring are we... to? Yeah, I don't remember what he was what he's talking about. We need an explanation, Benjamin <laughs> Baker. Yeah. I mean, I love Austin Powers. I'm totally willing to try and do a Dr. Evil thing, but I just don't remember <laughs> what we did. <laughs> Me neither. All right, so let's see who's going to come out next for Ukraine. Is it going to be Bly immediately, or are they going to send out Cass? Cass had a great game yesterday he against did. Snoot. That would have been great, by the way, for the storyline if Cass, you know, the, the old school <laughs> Cass, would have been able to make it happen against Snoot. It was a, it was a very fun match. Yeah, it was. Uh, the game against Snoot, of course, we can't forget that he did 4-0 in the mm -hmm. qualifiers, so Cass is actually like, in super good form, but uh, I don't know about uh, versus Neeb, basically, right? Yeah. Against It's always about like the, the player here, Neeb, but it also seems to be that Bly, he let Damaga go first because Damaga like, really wanted to. Mm -hmm. But if Koss is like, eh, I don't know, like you could go, then I guess I think Bly sounded like he really just wanted to get the uh, the hype going, the blind fire going because he's getting jealous now that Neeb's on fire again. Yeah, I know. They're like having a little race with each other about who can get the most wins nationwide. You know, yeah. at least for this year. I mean, they're the only group that's playing right now, so they got an unfair advantage yeah, like over some of the other nations. It's pretty unfair. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be super fun, guys. Right when the new year starts, I believe January 2nd is already going to be the first uh, broadcast day again. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a couple of the other great nations. Not sure in which order, but can't wait to see Poland in action. Can't wait to see the Netherlands play. Yeah. It's going to be so cool. Yeah, I'm actually super excited. Well, I guess, you know, if the USA were to drop out here, which doesn't look like they are, right? But, like, I got to cheer for someone else or the rest of the groups. Netherlands. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Netherlands. And then Canada. <laughs> that's <laughs> that I was going to go with. And then third for me is actually uh, Germany. I'm very excited to see how Showtime does. Mm -hmm. All righty. Who's it going to be? Will it be Bly or will it be Cass? Good old Misha. Within 10 seconds, we'll know. Obviously, I think the map is going to be incredibly important as well. Um, but I guess they can just pick. All the maps are available. Who oh, shall it be? Zero. Bly? Yeah. All right, it is Bly. So as I said, I think he's just kind of eager to get going against mm -hmm. Neeb again. I mean, he beat him twice yesterday, and I think he's ready to do it again here. How many times can he catch Neep off guard? Will Neep again still hold on to his bills? I mean, once again, with like a late Mothership core yeah. and... I, I don't know. I think it would be very, very stubborn because Neep, obviously, he's still a very confident player. Even when he's not, like, outspokenly the most confident guy ever, he knows deep down inside that he's incredibly good and mm -hmm. that he's probably, you know, when he's in peak condition that he's a better player than Bly. He has yeah. the results to back that statement up. So just make it to that late phase in the game. Bly even said it in the interview. You know, he's a macro player. Mm -hmm. I'm a cheesy player. We all know that Bly can do more than cheese. But over yeah. the last few months, it's definitely been leaning towards cheese a lot. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's... Maybe like a month of time where I was surprised Bly didn't cheese, but it, maybe not even a month, maybe like a week. It's going to be on Echo for this ZVP. Mm. Did they play on that yesterday? Uh, he played, no. It was Bly against Spock on this map. He went oh, for the, right. um, the block in the natural shenanigans with the drone, morph into a hatchery, yes. morph into an evil chamber, and then he faked him out with the muta transition that did a lot of damage. Yeah, exactly. Actually, Puck didn't have a bad game. It was uh, that last set of uh, force fields that really killed him, but also so the denial on the fourth base. But here we go. We're in a game number two in the bottom right for Ukraine. He is the blue Zerg Bly. A man on fire. However, there is another man on fire, literally when it comes to his Twitter handle, on fire Neeb, I believe it is. He's running on the left top side of Echo on a pretty protoss friendly map. It is Neeb. I already sending that probe out too. Uh to the scout there, that one exactly. We did have Puck try and preempt the drone hatchery block, and then it was just like a second too late, and that's uh, that kind of a bummer, but this is all something that Puck did. Bly ended up taking a third base and fourth base in an aggressive position. <laughs> Look uh, at all these probes, they're coming already. Okay, yeah, they're actually going to get wow, rid of that. Wow, that's a lot, right? Two, four, six, eight? Okay, no, no. Uh, Nine, yeah, that's, I, I feel like that's one more than you normally see. Because it means that right now, Neep is only mining of his main with just nine, Wall. he was even mining gas for a split second. He's, like, not mining anything at all. Yeah. I mean, he is really going to get that hatchery down fast. Of course, the evolution trick is going to come down, too. And then Bly does try and get another hatchery down if he can. He'll send that drone round and round and round. But, uh, yeah, Neeb should not let him do that. If you can 
can get it one more time. I, I always really wonder how this shapes out. Oh, if he would have been able to get that one down, then this game would have been truly interesting. If he gets oh, it down, oh, oh my god, that team range is going to no, block the no. Nexus. Bly. That was not supposed to happen. This is actually the first time I think Bly successfully gotten that second hatchery. Wow, only six probes again on the mineral patches right now as, Bly, as Neep is still mining a little bit of gas. Obviously, the spawning pool is incredibly late. So this time the cancel. There's still a oh, Zealot. Oh god. my god, Bly does not stop. I didn't even realize, too, that Neeb had given up his position in the natural, so Bly took his natural no problem, and is you know, it's going to be a regular base for him this time, not that outward base that was a little bit scary against Puck. But dang, that is a long time not to have that nexus. Yeah, you can see that Neeb a little bit distracted as well. He was chrono, boost out, chrono boosting out um, his gateway, <laughs> by the way, all this time. He's going to take this gas as well. Now, finally, he switches the chrono back to the nexus, but I really think when this is all done and settled, that Bly is going to come out of this with a pretty massive economic lead. Yeah. And of course, I mean, the numbers are going to look good for him, but I'm thinking more towards Neeb's mental state right now. Like, Neeb is yeah. not some guy that's, like, pounding the desk because he's so frustrated, but we do know that sometimes in his head he'll think, like, well, I definitely should not have let X happen. In this case, it would have been that second hatchery going down. It's something that hasn't happened before. It actually happened here. He even got this, you know, extractor in the main base. This has got to be annoying for anyone. Uh, I think this is really quite bad. I mean, Zerking speed is starting up now. Oh, Nee perhaps can make something happen with his first two adapts if he opens up double adapt. Otherwise, no. maybe the first adapt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, this drone has gone down. It's been a massive nuisance. But yeah, uh, once again, I really think this is an excellent start for Bly. Wow, yeah, almost being up to like 600 above. That is a lot. Well, the Adept is at least going to try and force some Lings out. If not, get a couple of drones. Actually, the Lings are just going around the Adept. A little sneaky. I'm not sure they'll be able to get into the, the natural base of Neeb. His wall looks like it's almost complete, but uh, they're not going to be here to help against the Adept. So that's at least two, maybe even more drones going down. Yeah, he's going to have to pull the drones here. Uh, yeah, he should be able to get at least three here. Good that's focus nice. fire there by uh, Neeb. Okay, that's very solid. Were the Lings actually into the main base, though? Oh, they did, I yeah. Believe. Right? No. Oh, those are the probes? They oh. look like blue. So sorry, <laughs> right? guys. It really looked like I had blue I on my monitor. <laughs> okay, yeah. So Neeb did have that wall off. And of course, he had that zealot from before. So uh, not actually going to take damage from this. But of course, again, annoying. The four drones from the Adept, though. And the Adept, did it, it's actually in the third base again here, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is a very low attempt, so trying to do damage. Yeah, Neep probably, oh, excuse me, Bly probably regretting that he sent those links across the map. Yeah. If those links would have just been at home, this adept really wouldn't have been able to do all that much. Ah, oh, Bly, sleeping on the job. All right, so the Oracle, I don't think that Bly is aware of the target at all, right? I don't think a single Overlord has made it into uh, the main. Well, we have one right now. Would be great <laughs> for Bly if he can get a scout off. Yeah, I mean, he may be able to see the Oracle uh, if it takes the right path, but... It'll be just like a little bit, a uh, little bit late actually seeing the Oracle pop out, but we'll see. I mean, is Queen's Elise will be in position, but I don't see any Spore Crawlers on the way. Yeah, these Spores are going to be a little bit late. How many yeah. Queens are we currently looking at? Just a single Queen in the natural, one Queen per base, so this should actually yeah. uh, give Neeb another nice opportunity to get maybe five, six drones. I think the nine that the first Oracle got in the previous game was a little too much, <laughs> but he should be able to get five. Yeah, I would say that usually five without a spore crawler is, uh, is the way to go. So four, and then probably could have gotten a fifth, nah, but goes it. to the na the main base to really get that scout. Oh, and still gets a fifth. Actually, Six. I guess he realized <laughs> that the queen was not out of position, so he went in for a sixth one, too. Nicely done with that oracle. Shouldn't be able to do too much more. He also went for the void ray right after that first oracle as opposed to a second oracle, so... I guess he would have to be pretty worried about wow. like, Overlord drops. That's a lot of adepts, and I don't think that Bly has been thinking about this at all. Bly pretty much has no army supply. This could get very uh -oh. ugly very quickly. He does have a Roach Wine, if I recall correctly. Right? Didn't I see a Roach? Yeah, okay, he has a Roach Wine. But he doesn't have any Roaches right now. If Neep just commits to this, there's a good chance that he gets a whole bunch of drones again. Wow, that is actually really good. He gets into the mineral line. The Lynx try and stop him from getting into the actual drone line, but even the drones are being pulled here. So five already going down, shading into that main base. I mean, this isn't being followed up with more Adepts, but these Adepts are doing a lot of damage. Yeah, he's actually doing, doing a lot of damage. Very awkward timing here, but it just works out great because you don't expect it normally kind of wait for resonating glaives or they don't make this many adapts. Well, Neep did it, realizing that the early game must have slowed the tech down a little bit off fly, and he's applying a lot of pressure at this point, getting 10 drones, 12. I think this is going to be the final call for these adapts. Well, yeah. that was very nice. Yeah, it was really nice. The fact that they lasted so long, too. I mean, if they get 13, wow. 14 drones, but then they instantly die. Of course, you have to be a little bit worried about the counter since they just made units, but 
Vlad actually took a long time to make units. It wasn't that many units at the end, too. Like, only, like, a handful of lings went across the map. And Neve has already gotten his third base up and running. Super interesting game as Bly is taking his fort as well. These links might be able to get a couple of probes here. That's nice, you know, finally doing something back on the other side of the map, forcing a couple of Zealots to be wiped in as well. I mean, Hydra is then on the way. I think it's really hard to call this game. Obviously, Neep is incredibly happy with the economic damage that he did. But mm -hmm. at the same time, Bly has quite a bit of money in the bank. He's making more drones. He's going up to four bases very quickly. Wow. I'm not sure if he scouted the double robo. Uh, maybe he did, and that's why he threw down the Spire. Yeah, okay. yeah, he definitely got to that third base, but I'm just looking at his gas right now, and I think there was definitely a mistake while he was dealing with all the adepts <laughs> that he didn't throw down his gases or didn't have them saturated or took them off. Like, something happened, basically. He but I think by the time the Spire is done, I think he's still going to be able to make quite a few mutas. You know, it always takes a while. Yeah. He's already on four gas. He's taking the other two right now. I think it was kind of all right because he just lost so many drones and he didn't want to make the, you know, the extractors too early on and just replace the drones as quickly as possible while mining the maximum amount of minerals that he could have. Yeah, but it means only. I mean, it's actually surprising taking any hydras at all. So one hydra is on the way, but yeah, saving more towards those yeah. mutas. Or so it's going to be six, and then maybe the plus one or seven mutas when that is finished up. And Neve, I don't think, still has an idea about it. It could be that uh, maybe he looked at Dimaga's game and yeah, he's like, he well, if I can hide it a little bit longer, maybe I should just go all out and make mm. nothing but mutas. Temple Ark is being wiped in as well. Neep is going to try to shut down this fort base, and there's a very good chance that he will get it, especially with the Mothership Core here. I mean, the two Hydras oh, no. were adorable. Oh. oh my god, Bly is so supply blocked right now. He's trying to make Mutas. The Spire actually finished, but he can't make anything to defend against this fourth base. Two Mutas are not actually going to kill this army, especially because the recall is going to be available. If the drones can get away, that would actually be quite nice for Bly. I mean, losing this hatch is honestly not that bad, because he has that hatch on the right top side as well. Which I think that Neep is super unaware of. Oh, finally. But yeah, the supply block was quite ugly. Yeah, he supply blocked again. Finally just makes... I mean, he had so many minerals. I'm surprised he didn't make them, but probably didn't have the larvae either. I don't know, but that is a base down. Neep probably, like, very curious as to where the yeah. army is. Like, what army is there? He has no idea. So the Lucid Phoenix, I think, got into that main base finally. Mm, he's going to see it now, so then he could start producing perhaps Phoenixes immediately. He's already wiping in five cannons, so that gives us the idea that Neep knows exactly what is going on. Yeah. Oh, uh, what is your core will live? Okay. Very nice. That is a very nice move there. As you said, like, Bly does have these other bases still at almost 70 drones. Oh, he's going to go up to like, oh, wow, that's a lot of drones. 12 more on the way. But what can the mutas do? Interesting that uh, uh, Neep is actually getting resonating glaives now and he's not canceling his immortal. He just wants to make more ground units. He wants to defend here on the ground, anticipating that Bly will stop making mutas, which he's actually doing. He's yeah. making nine hydrolisk instead. Wow, that is actually a really good yeah. call. I mean, I, I think it's it's correct that he's just calling that, but especially after facing Damaga, not a uh, little scared of the mass muta game. So the Stalkers are going to be warped in the main base. I mean, these mutas are doing something, but of course they can't really do a lot to stop Neeb from potentially taking a fourth base in these numbers, which, uh, as they leave, actually gets slaughtered by potent overcharges. But now Bly is actually going to go back to Mutas. He okay. really needs to take his extractors at this base, because his, his mineral count has been quite high. Now instead he's just going to... Oh my god, he's got this one as well. Uh, he's just been taking all the bases. Yeah, he's taking all the bases. He's also going to get into all the techs. So we have a baneling nest now yeah. on the way, going really into Muta baneling. But, you know, Neeb's already moving out here with a very fearsome army. There's a war prism, which kind of is uh, disappointing, but I guess that fourth base, he's willing to cancel, give up for now. Yeah, that's risky, because stepping this deep on creep, he might actually find the bailings here before they are morphed, and he will be able to pick up the majority of them going this deep into enemy territory without ah, a prism. Okay, well, the prism is there. But the Mutas can just jump on top of it immediately. Uh, yeah, but the force fields are pretty decent. They're actually blocking all the bailings that managed to finish, but is there enough anti-air? It uh. doesn't look like it. The stalkers get on way too quick. The sentries can't really help, and the Immortals, unfortunately, can't get away. More reinforcements coming from, I guess, that was like the fourth of the main base or something, but that's still, I think, too many reinforcements at the very least, even if Bly can't quite pull him, uh, push him back now. Yeah, Bly's making a lot of Zerglings, yeah. but now even more Stalkers are making their way across the map. Man, what a bizarre fight there in the end. He is able to survive uh, the fight with a couple of his Immortals. One Immortal will fall. The other one's very low in speed. There are so many links streaming in. Is there another Prism coming in? The Oracle actually is going to help out quite a bit. Yeah, it is. I don't know about the next War Prism. I'm checking the, the production tab, and that is certainly something that he is missing again, but the Stalkers from that third base ended up being just enough, just in time to save the majority of his army. Uh, he does have that fourth base. I guess it wasn't actually cancelled. 
I thought that was for sure, but Bly right, realized the necessity to get back home and defend. And again, we have to mention that Bly still has a good number of bases, but he did lose an army and a base there. Yeah, and he lost a base where he had a 7 and 8 gas, but then he immediately took it on the right top side. So that's well done by Bly. He's going to be able to mine enough gas again soon. And he has you know, retaken all the bases once again. That's such a bizarre game, bizarre playstyle. The one thing that I'm a tiny bit worried about for Bly is that he doesn't have any upgrades, right? And like, Muda oh, links yeah. are cute, but plus three Blink Stalkers, they deal incredibly well with that army I, composition. I could have sworn we had air upgrades on the way, but maybe I'm just remembering from last game. But yeah, absolutely. Usually you expect at least plus one melee. Oh, there it is, plus one melee. <laughs> uh, done for the Zerg by this point, but there it is finally. But absolutely, wow. plus three is going to be done with Blink. There's going to be Archons as well here for Neeb. I love this game because it's so wild. It's so different than most of the ZVPs we've seen. It's so Bly, but now Bly with all these bases, 78 drones, he's getting a few more, and obviously leaving, you know, the side of the map for Neeb is going to be quite risky, because he has to worry about all these Mutas flying in and yeah. just ravaging his economy. Wow, I'm really surprised he takes this fight, but Bly thinking that's worth it. Of course, on a big economy, you know, sometimes that is, but I'm just looking at his gas, and it is, of course, very low. It's only four coming out right now, finally getting those upgrades we were talking about. Yeah, there's a couple of Archons in the mix there as well, plus three is about to finish up. Neeb might get another snipe on this base, but the thing is, Neeb still does not know about this base on the right top side, which is a little yeah. silly. Yeah, that is. But I mean, the, the okay, Muta count... Okay, now he knows, I think, because okay. the links just streamed in. All right, so the, the Muta count really isn't scary enough that he didn't initiate a base trade either, which it looks like Bly's thinking is his only opportunity. There's only so many bailings on the ground as well. And these are against Stalkers, which of course can blink that nice concave and actually take a few hits. I just don't know about, uh, about Bly's gamer. Usually I'd be very scared for the Pearls without Phoenixes, but I think Neeb's ground army is just too good. Oh, he's got so many Stalkers. Now the remaining Stalkers that we're defending are coming in as well, and with plus three, they are going to do incredibly well here for the American Protoss. There are still 35 Stalkers on the map. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just bases everywhere. Neep has to be careful that he splits up his army not too much on one side, because now the uh, army on the south side is actually kind of small, yeah. but Bly is not going to jump on it immediately. I mean, I think Bly's already kind of been broken here. Like, he's only, like, yeah. <laughs> quote-unquote, only 30 supply down, but it's also in these mutas that it's going to get absolutely wrecked by the upgrades as well as eventually the Archons. I mean, Bly just never got to that super scary, like, 30-plus muta count that said, if you don't have Phoenixes, then I'm going to base trade you, and we all know what that was like in Heart of the Swarm. Never got to that point, so this is the last hurrah here. He's going into a concave of Blink Stalkers. Some of the, the Banelings are against decent hits here, but there's so many Stalkers left over. Not enough Zerg and too much Protoss as the last Mutas will fall. GG! Neep gets his personal revenge on Bly. After losing two games to him yesterday, this time he does win in a very fun, very entertaining nice. game on Echo. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm thinking about that 4-0 right now. He looked very strong against Bly, very calm, even after so many Bly shenanigans mm. happened that could have maybe tilted anyone else. But nope, Neeb, he is feeling it today. And of course, his next opponent will be Cass, mm -hmm. uh, guaranteed. But he is Terran, and I don't know. I think uh, I think Neeb also tightened up his PVT from that game versus the Muslim. Yeah, it's been looking good so far today for Neep. Uh, it was such a bizarre game because I still really feel that after all the early game shenanigans, I think that Bly put himself in a pretty sweet spot because yeah. uh, the economy of Neep was really hurting. Then obviously that one adept did a little more than it should have. I think it was three or four drones that it got. Four, yeah. And then the Oracle got quite a bit of damage done. But then the coolest thing about it all were these random six, seven adepts without resonating yeah. glaives. It was just perfect. That's something that you don't expect as a Zerg player. And like you mentioned as well, Bly was Supply blocked a couple of times at pretty pivotal moments. Yes, yeah, that definitely will show, I guess, if Bly gets in a later game. There's also like a very like just convoluted game, right? Which is usually where Bly shines, but yeah, yeah sometimes that macro starts to fall. All right, so the next player is going to be Kaz. We're going to have to a very small break, and after that, we'll be back and see if Ukraine can get the first win on the board. Welcome back, everybody, to the StarCraft II Nation War Season 4, brought to you by O'Gaming and Blizzard, where we are looking at a young American man who's on an absolute rampage today, 6-0, and, oh, and he ain't slowing down. Yep. USA. <laughs> Breeds good Protosses, I suppose. But yeah, Neeb is on a tear. I think the momentum is good. I think all of his matchups finally look mm -hmm. good and like in order to what we expect from Neeb, too, and Kass. Well, Cass was surprisingly good, I would mm -hmm. say. Like, you know, the first 4-0 and then that game was just snoot. So I'm excited for the next game, but I also think that uh, Nia will take this too. Yeah, the one problem I see for Cass here is that 
if there is anybody on this planet that's not a cheesy player, it's Kaz. Like, I, I don't think I've ever seen Kaz do something super bizarre, one base, all in, he proxy. Mm. He really is a very old school macro, a Terran, kind of in the same way as Happy was always that guy who would sit back, make three CCs, and then, you know, the Protosses that would play against Happy, yeah. they would just open up with four Nexus pretty much because they know that no attack was coming. And Kaz traditionally has always been a very macro oriented into, star, uh, you know, very sharp timing attacks mm -hmm. type of player. And I feel if you just sit back and you let Neep do what Neep does best, then I'm not sure if Kaz in his current state can defeat someone like Neep. Yeah, I'm a little bit torn. Like, I, I'm thinking of, like, the uh, possibilities, of course, of Terran. There's, I mean, there's Cyclone Shenanigans. There's, like, a Proxy Reaper to open things up. Yeah. There's a couple of tank pushers on some maps that are very good. But actually, what we saw versus the Muslim, well, the Muslim had just, like, great game overall. But the yeah. Muslim, and even a little bit versus Igus, even though Igus eventually ended up losing, there's still some, like, you know, like, I don't know, disconnection from the late game versus Liberators yeah. for Neeb. A couple of, like, uh, questionable blinks against the tanks, too. I actually wouldn't mind if Kosh just played super defensive, but Overgrowth... Ah is the map. You know, there's still one thing that I'm so freaked out about that I haven't seen it ever since uh, we started playing on Overgrowth again. And that is Terran players having a tank and maybe a Liberator or a tank and a bunker on the left or right side, depends where you spawn, of yeah. the natural. Like, this used to be, you know, all the hype. Every, all the cool kids were yeah. doing it back <laughs> in the days. And ever since Overgrowth came back, I have not casted a single game where a Terran player had that setup. I don't know. I, I absolutely agree. I think you were the one that brought me up and, like, brought it up and made me remember that existed too, but I guess they're just choosing the two base push on the third base yeah. more often, I suppose. But I guess the economy shape up differently in Legacy of the Void, but I yeah. still think it's doable. Maybe maybe Proxy Effect 3, who knows? Either way, we are loaded in to Overgrowth. It is game number three in the bottom left. Up 2-0 for USA. He is the Red Protoss Neeb. 6-0 today. Can he go 7-0 working on these stats? Over here on the right top side of Overgrove, looking in the main base of our Ukrainian Terra player, a real veteran of the scene, it is Cass. You want to know a fun fact about Cass? Yes, I do. So when StarCraft 2 just came out, Cass was still a very good Warcraft 3 player as well. And back then you had uh, the Zotac Cups and the Go for StarCraft mm -hmm. 2 Cups, like in you know, the weekly $100 tournaments. And there was a day, or there was a weekend, where Cass won the Zotac for Warcraft 3 on a Saturday and he won the Zotac for StarCraft on a Sunday. <laughs> like, I thought that was absolutely insane. I was like, man, this guy is so good in video games. That's so cool. Yeah. I don't think there's ever a Bruder player to do that. It's <laughs> awesome. Just in the same weekend, in two different tournaments, winning an online competition. And back then, that was pretty much, you know, these were very strong competitions as well, because StarCraft 2 just came out, so all the top players wanted mm -hmm. to make a name for themselves. And obviously, every single good Warcraft 3 player that still was, was participating in these cups as well because that was pretty much the yeah. only way to still make money. So <laughs> he really had a tough challenge out of him and he did it. Fun fact. That is an interesting fact. Early StarCraft 2 was so weird too, by the way. Like I only got in um, like officially into the esports side, I suppose, maybe like 2011. I guess it's a better thing to say now, but I was watching some of those plots. <laughs> like three yeah. racks tearing on one base. Seems like a good build. Uh, but anyway, of course, it's 2016, towards the end of 2016 anyway, but Nation Wars 4 and Kaos, I mean, he's been steady. He's been a steady player for, I guess, almost seven years now, but as you're saying, a macro player, and that might not shape up too well against a Neeb who is on fire. Mm -hmm. no, it's super fun. I think one of the very first memories I had of StarCraft 2 was when Hazelwolves played against, uh, it was either Cass or Happy, I'm really not sure, on Taldorim Altor, and there was just this massive build-up, one cloak Banshee show up, <laughs> Hazel had absolutely no detection, <laughs> everything dies, and the casters were going crazy, like, oh my god, this cloak Banshee! <laughs> it's so funny, and back then such I was like, man, build. that's such a good strategy! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he has an invisible unit! <laughs> such a good build, oh my god. The one base, like, Roach Horns I would do in ZVZ, because I was pretty bad back then, too. Like, that, that those were the awesome days. Ah, anyway, first Reaper gets in here. It's gonna want to scout, of course, in the main base, and it will get there. Actually, see everything. It was a pretty perfect scout. It might even still be able to get out. Yeah, very, uh, probably a robotics bay opening over here. Maybe a Colossus type of opening for a Neep. That's kind of what it looks like. Oh. The Reaper will fall, but not before Cass had a good scout. I think Overgrowth traditionally is a pretty decent map to get lucky with Widow Mines, because it's not that long, so the mine drops show up relatively fast. 
and obviously it's hard to cover the entire mineral lines with just one or two pylons. Yeah, of course, for Akasim, that robo does tell him he doesn't have to worry about leaving a wood of mine or his marines in position <clears throat> for potential oracle. <laughs> but it's going to be that fast robotic spam. I'm going to go with Colossus as well. I mean, maybe he takes a, a you know a page out of the book of Puck, his teammates, and does a disruptor drop every now and then. But I'm thinking like once, maybe over like hundreds of games. I don't think uh, I've seen Neep do the disruptor drop anymore since he lost to prison with two disruptors <laughs> against Marine Lord in Dreamhack <laughs> Valencia. Okay. I really think that's the yeah. last time I've seen him do it. And I think if he would do it, it would most likely be against a CC first type of opening. Mm. Uh, I like where Cass is going, by the way, with the Raven and follow-up, but let's see if these Widow Mines are able to find an opening. I think well, with three Stalkers and an Adept, yeah. it's really hard to drop anything into it. Is he still going to go for it? Yes, he is. He just drops both Mines immediately and actually gets both shots off, I think. Yeah. yeah. Three well. and well, almost guaranteed the other one will get at least one probe. Oh, the stalker! No, nope. yeah, uh, <laughs> should not get a stalker. Actually, Koss just anticipating the observer coming in here, which it does. So that was a good pickup, and that was just really bold from Koss. But really well. I mean, that went perfect. I think not only three probes, but a lot of lost mining time as well. And he forced the observer to come home. Yeah. Now there is one more observer that may actually just die immediately if Cass is on the money. There we go. Yes. Of course, you don't really expect a raven this early. <laughs> and Neep is like, oh my god, I gotta get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that definitely should have died. The Marines are right there. But I'm really interested to see what Koss does with this Raven as an addition. I mean, I was going to bring up the tank push. You know, mm -hmm. bring up the tank push, but I was going to you know, specifically talk about Koss doing it because I think he can. But with a Raven, too, that would be an interesting addition. Again, taking out the Observers um, pre beforehand might be a good move, but also just thinking of the auto turrets really help out. I don't know. I think it's mostly PDDs. Uh, I mean, yes. all the turrets, the, yeah. the harass could absolutely be very tricky. I mean, we saw how successful my brother Natanius is with it. But I think overall against Protoss, you mostly want to just bank up as much energy as you can. And uh, PDDs can be pretty useful in the fight, especially if you know uh, you yeah. have a Liberator or two as well. I'm thinking, of course, because a lot of the times we see the Adepts doing a lot of damage. A lot of the times, uh, the best wow. defenses I've seen against like these tank pushes in Overgrowth have been mass Adepts. Of course, PDDs, I guess. Uh, well, the auto turrets here. Oh, he burns all the energy. That's actually a little bit sloppy there by Kaz. Yeah. Not only does he lose 100 energy now, he doesn't even get to prison. Yeah, I uh, I think <laughs> I would expect the auto turrets too. Of course, they got that, uh, that buff recently. They look really good, even if they last a little bit shorter. But huh. uh, now that Warpism lives. I feel now his push becomes so much weaker. Uh, especially if he would have been able to mm. push out with two Liberators, like that makes it so difficult. If you Actually. throw down a PDD, then how on earth are these Stalkers supposed to take care of the Liberator and nothing really else shoots up in the Protoss army? Yeah, I absolutely agree. I don't think that's something that Kass was thinking of when he you know, tried to get the Warp Prism. Of course, he was probably thinking first and foremost, if I don't yeah. have to worry about a Warp Prism, then I don't have to worry about coming back home <laughs> and having my push delayed. But of course, neither is working out right now as he does have a set of police's reinforcements back here. And there's an army already waiting for him, and his tanks aren't sieged. Oh, God. He sieges no one right now. He could have potentially picked them up with the one oh, meta back, but he shot. didn't do it. So this really got shot down, and this army looks suddenly very, very weak. Well, that could not have gone any yeah, worse no, for Cass. Basically, the worst thing to happen when you do that type of push on Overgrowth <laughs> is for them to meet you, unless they really botched the, the meet. But that, that was actually pretty perfect. They didn't even get to shoot a shot Stalkers once. Finally, the War Prism went down, and they ended up, okay, just barely getting that SCV. But that was just such a good hold by Neves on three bases, and he just didn't lose that much to it. No. Of course, most importantly, saved his Colossus, but his gaming units survived in those part too. Yeah, the numbers show us as well. 2,700 resources lost for cast, or at least almost, and only 900 so far for Neve. I felt the early game was honestly not that bad for Cass with the, the Winner Mine opening, and I felt that he maybe could have got something done. But as soon as the Warp Prism started showing up, burning all the energy on the Raven, then it's kind of running across the map while not paying attention, dealing with the Prism at home, and being caught completely off guard. Well, yeah. Neep is absolutely loving life right now. Yeah, he is. I mean, double forward, going to be Chrono Boosted here. And I think Cass is already at plus one, but he doesn't really have a secondary force to push forward and start scaring Neep. The best he could do was try and start dropping, but he's actually been using a starport for Liberators. So only one Medivac, and the chance of losing that is, I think, too high to try. Yeah. With one matter of fact, there's honestly not that much you can do. He starts making a couple of Vikings. Now, we've seen this in the past where sometimes they make only Vikings and then indeed there are no matter of facts, or they make just a few Vikings, but then it's not enough to actually kill the Colossus. So let's see where Kaz is going to go with this. But from this point on, I just yeah, it's just so hard because what is the right option for Kaz? What can he do? I think the only thing he can do is sit back and macro up. Yeah, I mean, Lucky the only thing here. Nice. 
Uh, the only thing I can think of is that by going for the Vikings first, because of course not quite on three bases, he can't really afford double starport, but by going for the Vikings first and the Liberators, you might get these Colossus in these awkward positions. If they attack towards the third base, of course there's that uh, ledge that you can go over the Vikings. Basically hope you get a couple of free Colossus, you know, whereas the buy on the ground, maybe not as likely for that to happen, but either way, you just don't have this complete army as a Terran player. He's adding the second stop with right now, so perhaps eventually Cass can still get up to a very powerful Terran army where he has plenty of Liberators to work with and hopefully has some medevacs for uh, his ground forces as well. And he feels very adventurous right now, despite the fact that he's going up, well, he already but is on four bases, and charge finishing up. He's going to go for that Whoa. one, disrupt the shot, and it will connect with a whole bunch of Marauders. Stark is perhaps get a liberated there as well. No, that won't happen. But good move by Neep. And, and you can just see it. Neep is so confident right now. He's really feeling it. He has a lot of map control and with charge as well and the Colossus at home. Uh, like the numbers make it look like, oh, this game is kind of close, but it really is Neep in the driver's seat. Yeah, exactly. I think what happened there is maybe Neep expected the army not to be confident enough to push out after that disruptor. So unfortunately, he loses it. But yeah, he's in a really dominant position. So not too much to lose. I just... I mean, you said it well, the numbers aren't that bad, and Cass, you know, is definitely losing this game, but there's one thing that I've seen in the past from Neeb, he can let his opponent get to a, basically a maxed out position, right? He actually waits too long to kill his opponent, and a maxed out army, even if it has like slightly worse upgrades, can technically make things happen. That's the only thing I'm worried about, but Neeb's actually pushing out as I talk about it, still up in uh, supply here with good upgrades on the way. And the Liberators are out of position, and at the same time, as soon as the entire army here uh, of Cass is going to show up, Neep doesn't have to go up this ramp. He still has a couple of Zealots on the left-hand side. Actually goes Whoa. for the forward blink with Disruptors as well. That was really, actually, really bold. The Disruptors almost hit his own Stalkers. The Archons might just be able to do it, but the Stalker numbers are actually thinning out here, and the Vikings are still alive, so they're taking on the Colossus, and the Concave of the Bio is actually pretty good, too. But during all of this, he has a couple of Zealots in the third base, and he's killing a whole bunch of SCVs. 20 oh. Two SCVs have gone down, that and these Zealots who actually sealed the deal. That is it for Koss, and that is a 3-0 for Neeb, so he is still on his hot streak. I mean, Koss had probably one of the better engagements he could have. Again, his Vikings actually mm -hmm. able to take all those Colossus as the Stalkers went down, A+. plus. But yeah, everything else was just too much, and... Uh, PVT still, yeah. as I was saying. You know, Neep went a little YOLO matchup. there in the end. I don't think his 2 2 upgrades were done. They were close to finishing yeah. up. He just went for it. He looked at the army. He's like, nah, this game has been going so well. Yep. I'm on four bases. Even if this is a bad fight, it doesn't really matter. What I thought he was going to do is just shark around with his army. This was that one hit. It was actually a pretty decent hit. He gets like three or four Marauders. But he set up all these Zealots on the left top side. So what I thought he was going to do is like wave at Cass. He's like, hey, here's my big Colossus army. <laughs> and then Cass puts all his units there. And then the Zealots run into the third base, kill the yeah. SCVs, force Cass maybe too. But Nibi's like, no, he's just... Go for it, you know, shoots mm -hmm. the Disruptors forward or the Purify Novas, blinked into everything as well. And the PDD actually did decent that fight, but Cass was just oh, too yeah. far behind. I mean, after that failed push and losing all the SCVs to the Adepts, it's going to be a rough game. Yeah, exactly. There's only two things I can imagine happening that would have actually made Cass win that fight, not the game, mm -hmm. <laughs> the fight would have been either a lot of Widow Mines or it's just they're actually shooting a Stalkers, which yeah. almost happened. It got close. Yeah, it's risky yeah, to do both things at once, shooting with Disruptors and then blinking forward as well. Don't try it at home, guys, unless you're, uh, <laughs> unless you're Neep. Exactly. Well, we're obviously expecting Bly to be revived here. Anything else would be a massive shock. Bly had a lot of success yesterday against Neep, and today is game... Oh, what? snap. I was going to say, like, Koss didn't have a... Oh, it's oh, going okay, to it's be Bly. Okay. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, here we go again. Hashtag cast occurs. No, it is going to be Bly. There is a small error in the graphic. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, well, yeah. I guess maybe things are getting liberated again. But uh, no, even though that game lasted a long time, it was already, always in Neeb's uh, hands mm -hmm. there. So definitely th send out Bly again. Hope that he can start the reverse all kill because that's what he needs to do now. Uh, I really think. I, I wonder how that game would have played out if Cass didn't tilt so bad against the Prism and didn't waste all his energy and then would have been slightly more careful with his first push. Yeah. Like, if the tanks can siege up, and I think even when the battle happened, I think the correct thing to do would have been pick up the tanks and drop them behind the bio army or just go back for a little bit. Because once you start sieging up, while the tanks are already on the full focus fire from the Colossus yeah. and the Stalkers, 
I mean, they didn't get a single shot off. Sometimes if you siege them up a little bit late, they still get two shots off on yeah. the stalkers, and that actually is pretty good with the new tanks. Yeah. So that's probably what Goss was thinking, but I think more likely he was just like, oh, damn, like <laughs> the army's right there. So definitely a panicked move. Yeah, he was at the point of no return, perhaps. Either way, USA is one map away from qualifying to the quarterfinals. Yeah, it is potentially the last game in the top rights on Daybreak. For USA, he is the Red Protoss Neeb. Absolutely on fire today, 7-0. This man was on fire yesterday, spawning on the left bottom side of Daybreak. Can he do it one more time? It is Bly. Yeah. We actually talked a little bit about their last game while there was a break going on. We both kind of agreed that it was just, I mean, it was a wonky game. It was a Bly game for sure, but that Bly's decision to go for Mutas and then his indecision to commit to the Mutas really made it look just like not his game, when usually it really is. And he had such a great start, too, with this type of shenanigan, which yeah. is, uh, you know, the hatchery and the evolution chamber. I tell he'll get the second hatchery. Wow. It really wasn't supposed to happen the last time these guys played and didn't happen before, so... Neeb should be on top of that. This time the hatch is a tiny bit later. That's why we are Neeb is pulling even more workers than he did before. I mean, that's a crazy amount of workers that he pulled. 11 in total. So the Nexus is going to be delayed a little bit, but absolutely not as much as it was on Echo. I mean, that was just not supposed to happen. But this time, however, Bly got a much faster hatchery down on his side of the map because he actually just went hatch first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, he can't really attempt the second hatchery. Of no. course, he doesn't have enough minerals. So the Zealot definitely will be stopping that. Uh, he could go for the extractor, I suppose, again, getting the main base, but he's just trying to be as annoying as possible. Oh, yeah. And it is annoying. Ah, okay. Thought about it there for a split second. If you would have been able to get it down again, I think Neeb would have lost it. <laughs> God, stop! <laughs> yeah. There's Neeb had his probe on the other side of the map. He's going to try and deny Bly's third base a little bit, too. Um, Daybreak definitely not on map. He wouldn't be taking any of those extra bases outside of the usual three if they do pylon block you, and this shouldn't last too much longer. Bly has a spawning pool as well, and he's uh, starting to mine gas, so hopefully for Bly, he's not going to take too much damage of that first adapt. That's obviously the downside of all his early game mm -hmm. shenanigans. That means Zergling speed ah. is going to be a little bit later. And this time, Neeb is like, well, you know, my adapt did great. Let's see what an adapt and a zealot can achieve. Yeah, feeling pretty confident. Of course, last time, Bly had a couple of lings try and counterattack, and that was mm -hmm. what filled the hole was that zealot, but not so worried about it this time. Sending both oh. units in, there's nothing to defend. No, this could be, uh, get very ugly if very quick. He's going to morph into a spore. No, he does not. So that's already a single drone. Uh, at least Bly stopped the, uh, the rally point from the main. Because if you would end up losing three or four workers here, it gets very painful. And, yeah, yeah. So fast. Uh, that second one, too. Wow. Yeah, nicely done. Has a bit of the ramp to work with as well. And the Zell and the Dev doing very nicely. Finally, the Queens pop out to add a little bit of extra DPS. And that will be it for this aggression. Two drones in total. Yeah, not bad. Forced out a whole bunch of links as well. So I, I think that was decent. Uh, Bly is not going to be that sad about it, and Neep is going to be relatively satisfied with it. <laughs> well, the Resident Enclaves is now on the way. So last time we saw Neep try and do this Resident Enclaves build, he just ended up getting lings in his face, in his base, in his natural base. It just went pretty terribly. But as Bly is still droning, that's not really going to be the case, and he should be able to execute the Adept attack. It's also a lot easier to wall off on Daybreak than it is on Newkirk. No, like I've right. played a whole bunch of games on Neil Kirk, but every game is just a new adventure. It's like, all right, <laughs> let's see how I'm going to build my beautiful city today. Yeah. And sometimes it works out great, and sometimes there's three holes in the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I'm honestly a little worried. Um, so Bly, you know, last time he played, uh, he just... It wasn't a terrible, it was actually a very good start with that, and then he lost those uh, those drones and those adepts, but once it kind of gets out of his control, because he usually is in such control with his cheeses, his aggression, his harassment, his lings on the map, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, when it's not in his control, I really do feel like he falters sometimes against these type of attacks, these adept attacks. Okay, he does know about the two gateways in the front. He sees two adepts as well, so that should give him a very good indication and even mm, saw yeah. the twilight. And it's a resonating glaives opening, so the Roach Warren is finishing up. And right now, he's actually in a pretty decent economic spot, Bly being seven workers ahead. And this phase in the game is actually a tiny bit more than I expected him to be ahead. Now, obviously, from this point on, he's going to be forced to make a lot of units, so that will allow Neep to catch up. But not bad at all for Bly. 30 lings already on the way. Uh, that's quite a lot, of course. No layer, by the way, correct? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Well, now he's going to go back to drone. <laughs> yeah, uh, for a split second thinking about some type of... Uh, Roach Ravager. Yeah. 
Or Trevor's all in. But no, it's just going to be, I mean, 30 lings to try and get a cancel on that third base, and then they might be able to make it back in time to help defend against wow. the Adepts. It should actually work out, as these pylons are not done yet. There are no Adepts here to save this Nexus. I actually think this is a great move by Bly. Yeah. Can he get the Nexus? I think he should. The only worry I have is that if the Adepts do split up, the Roaches aren't uh, all, like, there's only a couple of them. Actually, where are they? I know they, okay, they were from the main base. So the Queen will go down pretty quickly here. The drone line's not being pulled quite yet, but the Roaches don't actually take out the Adepts that quickly, so they're still getting a lot of drones. Oh my god, 10 workers have gone down already. The Lynx have been trying to get into the whoa, natural, whoa. and they actually sort of got in. Uh, if we, imagine if you would have surrounded that pylon <laughs> instead. Now Fulton Overjo is going to help out a lot. So Bly is going to ignore this part, and he's going to go into the main base. How much damage can Bly get done? Yeah, it's 12 drones, and the Adepts are still alive on the other side of the field. The probes are being pulled, but they're not really dying. You know, four is not that bad. Ling's still here. It might be able to get maybe even up to four more, as yeah. I don't think Neeb was anticipating this. No, Neeb actually uh, paying attention to oh his God. Adepts on the other side of the map, so these Ling's doing a little bit more damage. And let's not forget that Neeb just now restarted his Nexus. So even though he didn't lose that many workers, that third Nexus is incredibly delayed. I actually think it's very good for Blight, despite the fact that he's down eight, nine workers. Is there an answer to all these roaches? I really don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. They won't quite have roach speed, but they're probably eventually going to if they're on the aggressive move out here. A couple of adepts get caught off guard too, and they're not chaining forward to scout these roaches that are in front of their face. There, they finally oh. see them now. But I don't know what he has. He just has more Adepts warp in, no Robo. Yeah. If I'm Bly, I don't turn around here. Okay, he doesn't even have to because the shade has been cancelled. I mean, he could just knock down the, the front door, right? Maybe get the cybernetic score. That would be massive. If he gets the cybernetic uh, score in the gateway, then he yeah. can always just go towards the third Nexus as well and get a cancel on that one instead. Yeah, I was going to say, either he goes for that pylon, and that would be a risky move, or just go towards that third base, which should just be an easy pickup. I don't know if Neeb... Neeb, okay, Neeb is going to try and defend it. He does have a stronger army now. They're going to put more warp in, yeah. and, you know, Bly wasn't really reinforcing this with Lings. I think if he was reinforcing it with Lings, this going to be very scary, but the third base looks like it's going to survive. Uh, it's Neeb actually taking a lot of damage, to Neeb. This is probably the right moment to just go for it. Okay. That's what he does. Units are coming in, though. There's only a single sentry, and Bly is going to go for that one immediately. Now he changes his mind. In the end, he does get it. Yeah, I don't know. That's... Uh, I think without a pylon, without of course an overcharge, the Roaches might be able to do it again if there's Link flooding across the map, this would absolutely be it. But the Roaches, but most of them are still alive. The reinforcements were coming in fast enough, and Bly might just be able to snowball off of this. Yeah, finally, there are the extra stalkers that Neep is oh, probably portal. waiting for. And Big Daddy Immortal is oh, here okay. as well. He's going to clean up these Roaches for now, but there is Burrow on the way. Maybe a potential for Tunneling Claws later. Neep is actually, uh, I must say though, he did a phenomenal job there in not taking more damage than he actually took. Because now he's still ahead when it comes to, you know, the economic department. Only downside yeah. for him is that he doesn't have much army supply. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't have a lot of army supply to move around either. So as Bly, especially if he got Tunneling Claws, unfortunately isn't on the way, uh, would be able to, you know, split his roaches up. That would be very difficult for Neep to take on. Only just adding on those extra gateways as well. Only one Immortal not really covered by a lot. It's going to be target fire. The barrier's already popped. Mm, I love how he was waiting a little bit until that barrier expired. So he got maximum value out of his road shot. That Immortal will fall. These stalkers will fall. And I think it's safe to say that the, this time it is going to be Bly. As Bly just has units pretty much everywhere, even in the main base. Okay, this is kind of a risky move. With Fulton Overcharge and an Immortal here, you got to be a little bit careful with your roaches. But he has nothing uh, but roaches on the way. Yeah, if that second Immortal could pop out, which of course is stalled out right now, then I could definitely see oh. Bly losing far too many roaches and throwing his lead away. But without that second immortal, this one is going to go down soon. And of course, the burrow that he can utilize to make sure those roaches survive. I think Bly's got this. Yeah, double fault and hope charge is pushing out a lot of damage, but that immortal's only halfway done. Oh, the gateways will be on power at once more. Neep is losing 11 probes somewhere as well. I guess it's the burrowed roaches that are still being active in the main or something happened. Either way, Bly is more than doubling the supply of Neep <laughs> right now. To say the least, yeah. yeah. That's quite a big army supply advantage. Again, Roaches, sometimes they can be overcommitted, and if the Protoss can stabilize for like 30 seconds, it, it can happen, but he just lost too many of his Immortals. This one barely survives the last second right there. Neep is not ready to give up yet. He's more than aware, I think, that Bly has committed a lot to this, hasn't really gotten up to like 60 drones, for instance, and that it is just roaches. But unless his immortal count can get up higher, I think it's still going to overwhelm yeah, him. Yeah, the biggest downside now is that there is no observers, so these roaches can just be annoying forever. I must say kudos to Neep for just not dying a while ago. I think most Protoss players would have died a while ago. He's hanging in there, but I still think that Bly just has a little too much, as even though he's only doing this on 47 drones, 
Yeah, Blight really wants to kill Nii, by the way, immediately. I would love to see him just take out maybe that turret Nexus. Yeah, I was actually thinking the same yeah. thing. Because there's, you know, there's a potential, maybe even still, but I, I would say again, he's oh, lost too no, many immortals. No, no, the that trap. <laughs> was oh. trapped by the Warpins. Very unfortunate. There's this, yeah, finally. Nii taps out. GG. Bly actually takes it back for Ukraine. Yeah, it ain't over till it's over, and Bly gets a point on the board now. Which means that maybe we can prepare our bodies for the rematch between Natanias and Bly. <laughs> oh, Could oh, also be Bly versus Spock. I mean, it's going to be very hard because there are some nations where the star player is that good uh, that you can always say, well, this is going to go to the ace match. But yeah. I do not think, no matter how well Bly played there, and even yesterday, that Bly against Pock is a default win for Bly at all. Like, I think Pock is capable yeah. of winning a game against Bly easily. I actually, I believe so as well. Yeah. I know that Pock has been tweeting about some issues, though, recently yeah. on his computer, so I don't know how like confident he's feeling, to be honest. I think, uh, well, of course, everyone hopes that he just like four zeros both times, but uh, of course... Looking forward to Nathanius as well. Yeah. I really liked how Nathanius described his game, by the way, because I think that perfectly sums it up. He got a really good lead, and then it was just like deer stuck in the headlights. He yeah. could not follow it up. Uh, it's very hard, especially if you don't play a whole bunch of competitive tournaments. And even if in the past you were a very fanatic player, but then you take a break, the adrenaline rush that you get, especially once things start going well, yeah. like it's really silly how your brain works. Like, oh my God, I wonder what the people in Twitch are going <laughs> to say about my performance. This is going great. And then suddenly you forget to do all the things that you are supposed to do. Because yeah. I think if Nathanius would have been in a very chill uh, letter stream mode where he's just he has no idea he's playing against a Barco Zerk from that start, I think there's a very good chance that he wins. He even against somebody as good as Bly, yeah, because he really got himself in a sweet position. But let's see who's the next player going to be for America. It could be Puck, it could be Natanius, and obviously, if it comes down to the age match later, there is a chance for another rematch between Bly and Neep. But I'm happy that the show is not done yet. Yeah, it could have been a 4 0, and that would have been well, it would have been great for Neep and yeah. Team America, but of course, the broadcast would have been quite short. Yeah, actually, you bring up the, um, <clears throat> like, just competitive environment, like, you know, throwing kind of the game as mm -hmm. you get that adrenaline rush. It's actually what I thought was going to happen to Patak. Bring yeah. up that name again. I literally mentioned that, like, while watching, I'm just like, most players yeah. just, like, they don't know what to do after they start winning against, like, a professional player. But that guy was actually amazing. Looks like you guys are still in favor of USA win. Of course, with Neeb still on, you know, the revival, I would agree, too. But I, there goes my score prediction. No longer 4-0. What did I? I, didn't, I think I did 4-2, right? Yeah. All right, so that means that Puck can go right now. Puck, <laughs> I love you, but you have to fall. And then Natanius can close it out. Obviously. That's the dream. Take a look at this. Oh, I predicted 4-1. All right, ah. Nate, let's go, baby. <laughs> 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 Would be amazing. It's the way to go. So Funk Guy, I guess, is... Uh, Funk is out. Yeah. No, I mean, he could still have Ukraine. I feel like whenever you do a prediction game like this, there's always two ways to get a point, right? It's like one, getting the correct nation right or team right that wins. And then you should maybe get like a bonus point for having the correct score. Okay. But I think guessing scores, especially if you don't know who the starting player is, it's a little bit of a lottery. Yeah, actually, I'm like, <laughs> I would constantly just think that the start player would come out first. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday I had to realize that wasn't always the case. So my scores were not the greatest. Yeah, so that's the excuse. Yeah, that's the excuse, right? <laughs> I don't care, man. Yesterday I got, I think, Norway-Ukraine perfect, yeah. and I was like, nailed it. All right. Who is it going to be? I know we're probably going to get a lot of Nathaniel's emotes already in Twitch. I feel that the French freedom, guesses, freedom, they freedom, want to freedom, see freedom. Nate. I, I really hope it's Nate. I mean, Nate said he's quite confident in his TVZ. He had a good game against Bly already. Two, Who's it going to be? One. Nate. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. All right, well, Puck's pretty good as well. And uh, uh, let's see if we can get the first non Neep win, I guess, for Team uh, USA yeah, in this true. nation war, as neither Puck or Nate has won a game so far, even though they've had fun games. We played two maps, which means we're going to head over to a very small break. And after that, we'll be back with Puck versus Bly. All right, everybody, welcome back to StarCraft 2 Nation War Season 4, brought to you by O'Gaming and Blizzard. But we are getting ready for the fifth match between Ukraine and USA. It's going to be Puck versus Bly. Mm -hmm. We were watching Twitch uh, there a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was spamming those nady modes, Nathanius, Nathanius, but it's going to be Puck, and that's damn awesome, too. <laughs> 
Yep, so another PVZ. Mm-hmm. Uh, Puck did have a decent showing against Bly yesterday. He, you know, got stuck on the three bases that Protoss does against Mutas, and mm-hmm. then, of course, there's a couple of missed force fields, so it did end up uh, in favor of Bly. But I believe in Puck. I think if he's on a good day and if he's got his internet issues and whatever yeah. that was fixed, then I think he can do it. I think it was a, a rough game uh, strategy-wise, I think. Like, opening up with the Robo and then opening up with the Prism as well. Like, oh, what yeah. you kind of want to play against is a guy that makes a whole bunch of roaches, and then maybe a few hydralis and that everything is all slowed down a little bit but I think Bly reacted uh, very properly to it getting away with that mm-hmm. Spire Spire shuts down the prism opening and then forces whatever reaction you may want maybe sometimes a Stargate or at least a couple of defensive cannons uh, so it was just kind of rough and even then Pox still got himself like you said in a pretty decent position yeah. but in the end force wheels and execution wasn't there let's see if it's going to get better today yep I mean, Puck has uh, not had, like, uh, a good, like, great performance for a while. Uh, again, like, I think his last performance that I remember is in Montreal. And he's been uh, a lot of streaming, of course, mm-hmm. but not much on the competitive play. I think that everyone has kind of marked him as an inconsistent player. And uh, I think he's also said that about himself a couple of times. But I'm really hoping that today's the day for maybe Protosses in general. I mean, Neeb going 7-0 today is pretty strong. And maybe Puck has been, of course, well, of course, he's been watching the games. But maybe he sees what he can do against Bly to fix whatever happened yesterday. All right. The map is going to be New Kirk City. It's a dangerous map, I think, to play against somebody like Bly. A, a lot of surface area in the main base. B, very wide open ramp. Yeah. Uh, C, the first hatcheries can be taken <laughs> everywhere. I've even seen Bly, I think, do some weird proxies on this map as well. Like, there are some ways to get some spine crawler stuff going if you do it on the top side of the natural ramp. We will see. Are we going to have the first non neep victory? And is he going to send USA into the quarterfinals? Spawning on the right bottom side, it is Puck. In the bottom left, keeping it alive for Ukraine, he is the blue Zerg Bly. Love seeing the early workers when you face against Bly. Yeah. Always from the Zerg, always from the Protoss. And always taking kind of a weird route as well. Not a single, uh, excuse me, no gateway opening yet by Puck. That means oh, that if God. Bly gets the hatchery down, which he does, this is always a little bit uncomfortable as a Protoss nah. because he will not have the access to actually Chrono Boost out a Zealot. So he's going to be forced to pull quite a few workers. It's eight in total. That's enough to slow this hatchery down, but the hatchery actually already has quite a bit of HP, so it's going to take a tiny while. Yeah, this is deja vu, to be honest. It happened on Echo as well, where Puck was even like a little bit closer to getting that probe in position, but still missed out on it this time. Not even really that close, so that is pretty disappointing to start things off. Um, I just, <laughs> I hate to start things off like this, I guess, as we, uh, we try and hype up Puck, but unfortunately it does start off against that nice proxy. The evolution chamber went down as well. Uh, that, it ain't oh, over okay, till it's yeah, over. <laughs> say, that drone could definitely go back in there, Puck. Don't pull all those probes away. Yeah, right now Bly doesn't have the money for it, so he's just going to try to be annoying, but he doesn't even have to put the hatchery perfectly on location. We saw that in the other game. Ah. It's good. It's getting <laughs> close. For, okay, the two probes, though, should be able to prevent this hatchery from oh going down. Stop. Stop. Oh, okay, oh. yeah, that was even funny. <laughs> okay. The drone decides to leave this time, not going to main base and do an extractor trick, so... Alright, then looks like Puck did pylon block, or left the probe there or something. Okay, yeah, pylon block, so... Bly was able or forced to take this base. Not too upset about it, I would imagine, though. And Puck's not, like, blocking his third and fourth. A lot of money uh, for Bly, but the spawning pool just finished up, so he can start his queens. Actually, he makes six his lurklings. That's a few more than I would normally huh. expect in this phase in the game. Again. I either start nibbling oh. away on that pylon or you can just run them across the map and see if the wall is done or not. But this probe is actually a great scout for Puck. Yep. Uh, I am a little worried. When we saw that it was Nuclear Precinct, I was, of course, getting flashbacks to Neeb versus Bly. And then you talked about all the reasons to why it could be scary to face Bly on this map just in general. But um, yeah, I could be a little worried about Bly's Ling aggression. Uh, Zealot is a little bit late. I guess you could. I don't think you can warp a single pylon and that being a full wall off. Oh no. No, this is not really a wall of either. And with one link no. sneaking by, this is a tiny bit annoying. Can the links. Okay, now it is. No, that was not. super awkward. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Like, uh, yeah, Bloody realized it could have been an opportunity there wow. too. But this could be very big. That means he's unpowering the cybernetic score and that oh, gateway yeah. as well. And now with just a single Zelda there, obviously Puck has to be very careful because he doesn't know that there are no additional links on the way. Absolutely. But it's, that's why he kept the Zealot in position. Now these links are going to make their way into the main base. 
Uh, it's a rough start already for Puck. It is. Puck not really getting any luck here. He's going to lose a couple of probes probably. Uh, I mean, Blaz got to be careful when it gets around with those probes, but like poking at him, I think he's going to get like two. Webgate is still not being powered. Oh, yeah, that's pretty bad. The Adept takes a moment on the ramp as well, so it does look like two is going to go down. One of them is very, very weak, and Bly is going for it. Two, uh, three, actually. Three go down there, and the Lings all die, finally, but that was good. Of course, he's talking about the Ling. That warp gate is huge. The miss pull on the probes is unfortunate, and it just feels like Puck can't do anything right right now. Yeah, he's feeling the pressure, losing the probe on the other side of the map as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've all been there, right? When it rains, it pours in StarCraft 2, hey. and once one thing goes wrong, everything else goes wrong. Once again, it looks silly, right, that he just let the pylon die, but he didn't want to fight those six Zerglings yeah. with just probes. And he's afraid that, you know, he's playing against Bly. This is, once again, Bly playing into his image. If that Zealot leaves this wall off and it tries to save the pylon with the workers and 20 more links stream in, we're all sitting here like, oh my god, you know, yeah, why exactly. would you move the, the Zealot? I don't think our observer can be, uh, you know, very, you know... Uh, you know, harsh on Puck because he hasn't had the production tab up this entire time. But <laughs> <laughs> well, the observer is on tilt as well. <laughs> I've seen him letter earlier today, and I exp I know where the tilt is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's the reason. Well, the adepts actually do get in here, and they end up getting four drones. They might be able to get out. I guess the one thing uh, you know going well for Puck right now is that he hasn't been able to deal have to deal with Overlord drops. But as soon as I <laughs> think about it, of course, an Overlord drop gets morphed. Where is that coming in? All right, right the towards that main base. Spot. Is there a pylon in the main base right now? I mean, there's no. Well, there I said I know there's one on the north side, but there is nothing on the south side or even on the left side of this nexus covering it. So if eight zerglings do make it into the main base. This is going to be very rough again. I mean, at least the Adept is getting four drones. That's very nice, don't get me uh, wrong. But needs a little bit more. Now the Munish, of course, is out of position, too. Where's that Drop Lord? Uh, oh, the door's waiting. just open. He doesn't even need it. Yeah, the door was, the door was oh, open. Sick force fields. Actually. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, those are pretty cool force fields. Trapping the Lings entirely. I think the one that tried to slip oh. by also got taken out by the Photon Overcharge. That Overlord's still in there. But, of course, we're looking more towards what the Drop Overlord can do. Eventually, it is going to be used right now. Okay, two Lings is not that scary. <laughs> Never mind. There you go. <laughs> a couple more Lings now on the way. It's still something that Puck is not... It, it's no longer a case of him being distracted by one or another. It is just the Overlord drop. So it shouldn't do too much damage. It's not even a full Overlord drop again. I mean, yeah, but Bly already being 14 workers had that's so many. The only thing you can say is that his stack is a little bit late to the party, but he is getting plus one melee, so that should keep him safe against most Blink stalker timings, especially with the bailing nest as well. And if these five links can get a few more worker kills, well, mm. this is just where things get very, very frustrating as a Protoss player. Yeah, a little bit in the reaction too, so I think that three, maybe four probes five, could go I down. Uh, okay, yeah, there's that fourth one that was pretty weak, did go down. We have a... De uh, no, these are st uh, Zealots and Sentries. Just so he's seeing Adepts going across the map. It's going to be a recall maneuver, but I really don't know what he's expecting to do with this ragtag group of units. This gives me a French PVZ feeling of Heart of the Swine. <laughs> Lil Bao and Drogo are so proud right now. Lil Bao is, is about to retire from Overwatch right. and come back to StarCraft. If this would work, the problem is there's a Spine Crawler, there's a whole bunch of roaches. He's down in economy, and unfortunately... Uh. This push really got nothing done. Yeah, I mean, at least it was an instant recall, so he saved yeah. all the sentries just barely. But right, I, don't, I guess he was expecting or hoping that Bly was really being greedy on the drones, which uh, for a time he was, but then he just got 16 roaches, which are now moving across the map. A little bit ahead in supplies, got Ravagers on the way too to help Micro a little oh bit. Man. This Dodge is going to be fields. very difficult already. There really isn't that much Protoss, and these Protoss yeah. units that are out on the field are not that powerful. They're a little bit out of position now as well, so Photon Overcharge is going to have to save the day for now. Yeah. The Ravagers, I mean, they can take out the pylons super quickly. Oh they can take God. out the sentries themselves. If the force floats go down, they can take those out as well. And so far, Puck has not had a good opener here. He is now supply blocked with no pylons on the way. Finally, yeah. one on the way, too. Yeah, there we go. Just a very painful game, a very frustrating one. Um, he might have enough to survive a little bit longer here. Maybe if he can get an Immortal out there so he can still let this game go on. There are links again in the main base. They got 10 workers. Now they're going to run into the natural, so they perhaps force a couple of defensive weapons. Finally, a couple of pylons will be warped in near that nexus. But mm. how many workers have died for Puck this game? Must be like almost 30, correct? Yeah, not 23. Okay, 23. 
Not as bad as it seems, but yeah, still not good. It just hasn't been like that great of a game at all for Puck, and it's just it's it feels like everything went wrong for him, basically from the get go from the hatchery. And this looks like it's going to be game. No more sentries. A couple of blink stalkers as opposed to take on a, a handful of ravagers, but Bly should be reinforcing. Well, slow warp in there as well. Unfortunately, that pilot a tiny bit away, so the corrosive balls were able to connect. Oh, oh Bly <laughs> stepping in his own corrosive ball, but at the same time, the two banelings, the random two banelings, did connect with a lot of probes into the natural now a few more roaches start showing up as well 66 drones against 43 probes yeah this is a position that i just can't see puck coming back from he's got no immortals on the way he's got no more sentries he is again slow warping in these stalkers which blink stalkers if they're well upgraded can do a lot they aren't upgraded and of course it just is a bad economy situation for puck yeah, I mean, what, what do you do from this point on, right? Do you make a few more stalkers? Do you try to get immortals out? I have to admit, I love the way that Bly has been playing here with his Ling Harass. He's been relentless ever since he found the very first opening with those first uh, six Zerklings. He never really stopped harassing, and that's just been awesome. Yeah, this really has just been, uh, I guess, a slower snowball, but it's always been in the hands of Bly to win this game, and Puck just has never had an opportunity. Like, he never got that surprise counter with, like, a bunch of Adepts, for instance, or a War Prism to come out and start doing some counter damage. It was it was two Adepts killing four drones, and that was really it for Puck. Yeah, Puck's gonna step on the creep here. has to be very careful. Fortunately for him, there are not that many links out, so he doesn't have to worry about the wraparound. Mm -hmm. 23 Bane links being morphed in now for Bly. Bly's actually been quite rich. He's been floating a little bit of money, like, a little bit too much for quite some time. Uh, Puck is going to knock down his cooling tower. It's going to make his defense slightly easier. Yep. It's yeah, a couple of force fields, maybe. Yeah, well, actually, like, <laughs> basically a couple. So four sentries finally being warped in with a little gas Puck has. Still thinking his gas is the third base, so he really is just warping in uh, as many sentries as possible. And that's a good concave oh with Baneling speed rolling into the stalkers. They blink at the last second, but the force fields don't really help that much, and they still get destroyed. GG. Yeah, Bly very dominant in this game on Newkirk uh, City ever since the opening, ever since he was able to unpower you know, the, the warp gate, which just delays everything for Protoss, then losing a few workers as well. Yeah. It's just that's not the way you want to start off your uh, PVZs. And obviously for Bly, that's everything he's dreaming of and more. Yeah. You know, I, I love his early game shenanigans because even if it doesn't achieve that much, even if it doesn't put him necessarily ahead, what it does do is it throws off all the timings. And then you're playing a game where Bly obviously has a lot more experience than most of the Protoss players have because, you know, most of the time you can just start off with the build order you want to start yeah. off with. Yeah, it does. I mean, occasionally he meets those Protoss players that just don't take any damage whatsoever, and then it feels maybe Bly is a little bit lost, but no, he took control from the first step with the hatchery. Of course, the last player for America before the revive is going to be Nathanius. I'm excited. This is what we've all been waiting for. Can Nate close it out? That would be... The internet would lose it, I think. Yeah, I think the internet yeah. would lose it. I think that Bly would lose it. Just retire from gaming from then on out, right? <laughs> uh. Oh, well, this is what Nationwise is all about. Score is obviously 3-2 to two right now in favor of USA. If uh, Bly would win the next match as well against Nathanius, that means that we would go to the decider to determine who is going to be the second nation to advance to the quarterfinals. If you guys missed yesterday's broadcast, we had Norway winning this group. The group that's called Group USA. Yep. Yeah. Norway barely beating out Bly, mm -hmm. basically. So it really has been Bly and Neeb is the story for this bracket, I suppose. But Nate's still got something to say. He did have a very good, strong yeah. start against Bly. As much as Bly was laughing that he was the closest player to him uh, to beat him yesterday, it was actually a good game. Mm -hmm. Cute tweet here. Of course, keep the tweets coming, guys. Hashtag NW4. We love seeing all your tweets, especially since, you know, Zombie and I are just sitting here, so we don't <laughs> yeah. have our phones open while we cast, so it's very fun to see uh, a couple of tweets come in like this. Uh, well, just a single tweet there, but it was a cute doggy. Yeah, it was a cute dog, mm. yes. I'm looking for the cats, though. Have there been any cats yet? Uh, I believe maybe yesterday, I think oh, I saw one or two. I've seen more it. dogs. It's awesome. Hashtag dog win. Yeah, everyone's just <laughs> listening to you, man. man. What happens to all the like, internet users that have cats? I thought that was like a thing. Yeah. Only on Reddit, I think. Okay, only on Reddit. <laughs> so Vani Research Station is going to be the map. It's an interesting map. If I think of Nate's play style, hmm, I mean, it, obviously having a pocket expand is nice. You yeah. know, if, if you want to play like Nate, going up to three bases in general is not that difficult. Let's see if he can make it happen. Once again, I think the internet and Twitch chat would <laughs> explode. Kind of feel sad here for Bly because he's going to be a villain regardless. 
if he wins, well, everybody's expecting him to win. And if he loses, well, then once again, the internet's gonna lose it. Representing Ukraine, it is Bly. The good old double intro. <laughs> Love it. In the top position as the Red Terran for America, it is Nathanius. <laughs> Nate likes to ask TV scout and then spray. He's one of the very He's few one of the ones that got, does yeah. that. Okay, good. Because it's basically the only guy I've seen do it. Mm -hmm. he, like, he likes to spray. Mark his territory. <laughs> Here comes that SUV. He's got a very cool decal. Ah, it's very annoying. <laughs> oh, I know such a cool spray, too. Uh, I know him so well. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Nate. All right. So Reaper expand here. We actually saw a lot of CC first. So zone four CC first on this map from the Terrans beforehand. Actually, yeah, no, it was against Zerg. Yeah. Starting, the games are starting to blur together, but uh, this isn't really, I wouldn't say it's bothering him too much, but it will soon as he does, of course, will he will continue to take that gas that does become bothersome. But in the overall like scheme of things, I think that Nathanis should be looking towards the later game, as we were talking about, you know, his game versus Bly last uh, yesterday. It's all about maybe some early game harassment. Those Hellions, those Ravens were amazing. But then, of course, later on into uh, Mech and maybe even the Battlecruiser if he can. Yeah, this could actually be bigger than I thought it was going going to be yeah. at first because Nate does really need to get that second refinery up and running as quickly as possible because he loves to yep. go up to Ravens and if he can't get his Ravens out then obviously it's going to be a completely different game. Maybe right now it's just going to be like, you know what, change of plans and instead of rushing up to Ravens and then following it up with Hellions later on because I don't have enough gas, he can open up with a whole bunch of Hellions and see if he can get something done with it. Yeah, but I don't think this is how he wants to play. No, it's not a great start. I mean, finally lets the gas guys are finished so it can be killed now, but like most Terran builds want to have that second gas. So just looking up to that starport, I mean, I guess he can add on like, the, yeah, I was going to say the yeah. gas of the natural, which times out still fairly well with the command center, but still a little bit later than you would want. It's just not ideal. We'll see what he can do if he can get the same build going, but he is building the Hellions now. What's interesting, by the way, is that Bly didn't take the pocket expand here. Obviously, that's going to allow him to push the creep out a whole yeah. lot faster. But this is also a map where there are multiple ways for Hellions to swing around and maybe connect with that mineral line. And if Nate can find an early game opening where he can get a couple drone kills, well, things could get dicey for Bly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of an old school strategy, the way that everyone is playing on this oh, map back when the, the map pool last time. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah, he's all good. Also getting a Viking first, as opposed to anything that actually uses that tech lab is a little weird. But the Hellions, hopefully, are going to pop on the right side, not just be surrounded by those lings. These ones, I mean, it's only two Hellions and a Reaper can't really do very much. Is he going two base battlecruiser? Uh, he might be going for a, a bunny build. I mean, two base battle cruiser is all hype, right? <laughs> I, I mean, he has been talking about it quite a lot. Like, obviously, advanced ballistics is great on Vani. Uh, a couple of drones did die. That's actually not bad. Trading out two Hellions yeah. for four drones. I don't really mind it. But, um, oh, okay, damn it. awkward. Like, he's been watching Gumi Hole stream. He's going to research uh, Cloak over there. He's been watching Gumio's stream, and Gumio had this two-base battlecruiser build, and Nate said, oh my god, it's insane. It's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. Mm. Um, obviously, advanced ballistics is perhaps, you know, like the more obvious. So this is a great map for it, because there's so much airspace behind yeah. the natural and behind the main. But Just I would love to see it. Is it buying come on. time, buying time. Do it, Nate. Oh my god, it's a battlecruiser. <laughs> Oh my god, Gumi would be proud, Rift would be proud, the Thanos is just gonna be so happy oh, he can go for battle cruisers. This is kind of unfortunate though, yeah. he just lost three Hellions. Even the fourth Four. Hellion is taking a lot of damage. Can he save it? No, he can't. Oh no, oh, everything no. is revealed as well, no! <laughs> yeah, of course the tech lab's no longer researching, oh. so it's not Cloak. And I don't know, well, there's a, still a chance that Bly is still just going question marks everywhere. If he doesn't watch Gumi OC, if he doesn't watch Nathaniel's stream, I don't know how many Europeans are playing this way on ladder, maybe Lily Kanine, but it's possible that Bly's still going to be surprised or just underestimate Battlecruisers too. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people do. What is he got? Is he going to drop the Spire immediately? He's making roaches. That may actually be decent news for Nate. Um, and what just happened is super unfortunate because if his Hellions are just glooped up, that's the Spire, by the way. That's a relatively quick Spire. Maybe if the BC can teleport into the main. Obviously, he has the Viking there. Run. No, the Viking is br brought home, but maybe he can just scan down. That's a very fast BC. Is there enough NTR right now? How many Queens are we looking at? Four. No, I, uh, I don't think that's enough, right? No. Four queens uh, won't take out the BC. No. Scan! <laughs> Teleport! Tactical yeah. jump. Let's go. I hope he does it. Yeah, I mean, he's already oh, doing there it. There you go. Yeah, in the natural this time. There's a sport crawler already on the way, but of course it's not too hard to touch from a battle cruiser. If he finds the... 
Okay, he's researching the amount of cannon right now. If he finds the yeah. spire, if he would have been able to yeah. get on the top oh, of the man. spire, that would have been massive. I really wish he had chased those drones into that main base. He might have been expecting more queens over there, or just, you know, defenses, but I agree, getting that spire would have been really good. Of course, battle troops have come out so slow, so the second one's not really, it's only like halfway done, but the Hellions are moving forward here. The roaches are a yeah. little off guard, and those drones could get oh. roasted. Yeah, this is actually a great opening here for Nathania. Like you said, the roach is a tiny bit out of uh, position, and obviously Bly occupied in dealing with the battle cruiser. Hellion's gonna fly into the main and set. He will find the spire. Okay. And by the way, where the spire is right now, maybe there is a chance if Bly doesn't make Corruptus immediately. Which he can't. Yeah, He's which uh, that Nate can jump behind that spire and the battle cruiser should actually be able to shoot at that spire. It's such out a of dangerous range. maneuver though. Like Nathanius is probably thinking he saved up enough money for Corruptors already. Dangerous is his middle name. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Second Battle Cruiser warps in just to help the first one. I really wish oh. the Spire would go down, but there's still only two Corruptors. Yeah, Bly's actually pretty broke. He's only making two Corruptors. Two more are on the way oh now, but gosh. it's going to take a little while. And Bly <laughs> is down in work as Natanius is getting some serious work done with his two base Battle Cruiser build. He's been living for this. <laughs> this is a boy living his childhood <laughs> dream right now. Oh my god, the Battle Cruiser is going to. No, it's going to warp away! Oh my god, it's like the cooldown, it's amazing! But I don't, I don't think he can, I, I'm not sure if this one is a cooldown now. Unfortunately, I think that this BC yeah, is BC down, is. and I believe that Morty has told me that's very expensive. <laughs> Okay, well that was an amazing like ray of hope right there. I think the game will continue on. Bly, a little bit supply block still, probably a little bewildered by the battle cruiser and its strength. This one does go down. But what do you do from here? Like you only really still have battle cruisers, battle cruiser. Like a second one's about to pop yeah, out. He needs to repair it as quickly as possible. He's got a couple of mines, okay. Imagine if you could bait well the, the corruptors will probably see it. If you could bait the corruptors into those mines, that would just be fantastic. He's gonna have to lift up this CC for a split moment. Uh, I mean, that spire is in a very, very vulnerable position. I would like. Oh, the, oh, the mites! Oh, does he see it? You can kind of see it. If you can Yamato, for it. actually. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Instantly gets a couple of corruptors right there. I mean, he's still they holding fight on. This. I would love to see Nate. I mean, uh, the problem is if he blinks into, you know, the. Uh, other side of the map, then he probably can't ah. get out anymore. Oh no! Actually, he might not have seen those windowmines burrow. Uh, again, he might be anticipating this. He might have some idea of how Nathanius plays or what he would expect coming out. Because you, I guess you haven't seen Hellions in a while. Like, what else is going to be coming out from the factory with the reactor? Oh, he's going to be careful there. One oh, BC is God. running awfully low. It spawns. He blinks away. That actually micro, baits though. the corruptors into one of the windowmine shots, but it's still kind of vulnerable. Very low in HP. <laughs> <laughs> he almost got into the other windowmines though. One went off and actually severely injured the corruptors. If only. He could have had all of them uh -huh. in a clump. Maybe, maybe had killed all of the corruptors, but seven more are on the way anyway. Yeah, the big issue right now is that Nathanius has not been mining up this base for a very, very long time, and uh, that's actually starting to hurt him because he needs the uh -huh. gas, right? He would love to get extra starports. He should not lose at BC as he has a Yamato cannon as well. However, the tanks might get picked off. Uh, that last one barely going to survive, it looks like. Barely, barely. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, come on. Trade of mine. All right. Well, I think the Roach probably would have gotten the last shot up anyway. But this is a just questionable state right now. You look at the numbers, and they really aren't that different. You look at the bank, and it's really not that different. Nathanus is finally on that third base. Bly has been winning recently. He did actually get a ton of drones, yeah. and he got that fourth base up very quickly. Even the gold now, so he should be winning even harder, <laughs> you know, very, very soon. But How many Corruptors are we currently looking at? Like 15. Eight. Oh, eight. Well, eight, eight, is more than eight is not that many yeah, yeah. yet. Got to be careful though. You don't want to send those BCs out too far. He should get a couple of turrets as well around this third base. That would be fantastic. Oh, he already yeah. has that. Well done. Yeah. And he's got mines. All right. <laughs> Nate has starting to stabilize on three bases. The links uh, would be a little bit annoying here. He should be able to blink, right? Yeah, he's, he can blink. Yeah, he should definitely blink away. Oh, he, bl he blinked very early there. Well, yeah, I know. I mean, the SCVs are on top of it. Oh my god, this push. The friendly bar on the tanks, please. The friendly bar on the SCVs, oh my please. God. please. These Widowmines aren't actually doing what they were intended to, which is to get those corruptors right over them. But he does hold again. Uh, losing 17 SCVs is actually not that bad because he's somehow still on 66 oh, yeah. SCVs. I have no idea how that's possible. I think the other game, he made a few too many SCVs as well. It's just a thing where he gets nervous, I guess, and he, he stops really paying attention. But he's still alive. He has yes. a lot of minerals. It would be awesome if you could just dump it into a whole bunch of health and start sending those across yeah, the map. Yeah, actually, I think that's what we're missing right now. I mean, you can't really afford any more factories. His gas is yeah. that tight, and you know, only one is a reactor, and you do need widow mines. But a couple Hellions, like, uh -oh. pulling Bly back, would be really good. This CC is going to be under uh, 
A lot of potential focus fire from Caustic Spray, I believe it's called. Yeah, it's not a ton of corruptors. If you lift it immediately and repair while it moves, you can actually get away. But if you don't lift it at all, you can't out-repair it. Uh, so there are Hellions, I believe, on the other side of the map. But this CC is going uh, to die. Okay. Nate not paying attention as he was busy with his Hellions. That's a pretty big loss, but he does have 1,700 minerals in the bank. But the biggest <laughs> issue is that he's not mining that gas right now. Yeah, exactly. Oh. The gas is definitely the biggest issue. Oh, okay, and you can also just go... Yeah, okay, then, yeah. More corruptors came in, and they did have the opportunity <laughs> to do that. So now I'm going to choose to go for the missile turrets first, which is probably wiser. We have a little hit squad that includes a couple of SCVs, which looks very interesting. Of course, these battle cruisers looking for a snipe on a hatchery, and they can link back. Yeah, yeah that could be nice. As the corruptors were pretty far out of position, having the SCVs here as well. Maybe we can just buy a little bit of extra time. It's going to go for the Yamato cannons right now. Does a lot of damage. Will he be able to get the kill on this hatch? He should be able yeah. to. The corruptors are getting awfully close, but he can always blink away. Yeah, blink away, blink Go. away. Ble okay, yeah, I was worried he's a little bit distracted, but he's not. He uh, saves his battle cruisers. <laughs> but, you know, Fly has it. like 2,000 minerals in the bank. He still has a gold base as well. Well, a gold base with a mine on it. But I don't think losing a hatchery is actually. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Nate's having way too much fun right now. Nate, you're actually up in supply. He you're is. doing really good. But because Ply hasn't made anything in quite yeah. some time. Yeah, Finally, yeah. a lot of overlords are on the way. I guess he wasn't exactly sure what he wanted to make. Yeah, I I'm, I'm not sure about what Bly is doing right now, but I'm not sure if Bly is sure what he's doing. Maybe yes. he wants to get Hydralisk, <laughs> but Hydras can actually be very dangerous because Nate is still making uh, tanks as well. Yeah, I don't know about this. You know, Bly kind of had this moment against, I want to say, Seether maybe? No, no, that was Snoo, wasn't it? I think Nate's doing it. Bly had this moment against a Terran, and maybe it was Bly uh, versus okay. Nate last time where he just did not spend his minerals, and it was like a moment where it looked kind of scary, but then he did, and he actually had a very good army, so it goes into a lot of Hydras and a lot of Vipers as well. Mm, yeah, the Vipers are obviously one thing that's going to make it a little bit complicated for Nate as he got seven more drone kills. A lot of Corruptors are here. I'm not sure what the BC <laughs> count is at currently. Uh, still, okay, uh, it's at three, three. Actually. Uh, That's not enough. Not. He needs more because he definitely needs a lot of BCs to potential. Oh my god, he got another. The yes. Missile Turrets are going to help there, obviously. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't put him behind. Of course, that's what Bly is trying to do, like specifically. Yeah. He's going around the missile turrets looking for these snipes. Uh, very good use of the Corruptors there by Bly. You gotta give him a lot of credit for that. Same time, Nate's still being annoying with a couple of Hellions here and there. Actually oh, makes a whoa. push right now. And that's right before I think the Vipers are gonna have a whole lot of energy. There are a couple Where of lists, but they don't have great upgrades. If Nathanius can siege up here... Okay. Well, they are getting energy uh, now, and he has to really help to spread out. The Wooda Mines, maybe it could be a little bit farther forward. Of course, if he baits the Corruptors into them, that would be great. But I'm thinking more about those mining clouds. Yeah. That base is going to go down, but Bly has a base, maybe even two, to give up as long as his army doesn't die. Yep. Here are these first up docks. Is there Whoa. enough? Uh, okay, he's going to be able Whoa. to save the BCs at least. That's something. And the Wither Mines actually got a pretty disconnect as well. Is there enough energy for Blinding Cloud? There yes, is. there is. Yeah. Oh, God. On every single tank, or almost every single tank, that one's trying to be a hero, but it's abducted into a Blinding Cloud. <laughs> well, he still gets a couple of shots up. Maybe yeah. get a few units. Are there Hellions or Hellbats at the goal? Oh, it's BC. He blinked them here, yeah, but that also means that they're committed, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, so he's going to lose that one to a squirk. All of these oh, ones are going down to the Corruptors, and that's really most of Nathanius' supply here. He dipped down so hard. He didn't have enough of a gas bank to really get high very quickly. I think he's still only on like three factories mm -hmm. and one starport. So uh, Losing the CC in the natural over and over okay, again three really hurt him a lot. My bad, but one is three factories still. Yeah. <laughs> Not very fast production. Uh, he is definitely vulnerable right now. I think if he could have maybe had like a 150 supply, you maybe still hold on in four bases. But beneath that, against this army that's almost maxed out, this could just be a killing move for Bly. Yeah, it was a cool move to see the BCs go to the gold. And I mean, he oh. was able to take it out. The Whoa. big problem is that he doesn't really have uh, an army anymore. And that made the BCs incredibly <laughs> committed. 98 SCVs. I didn't even notice oh he went God. up that high. There's no way he's actually uh, using that effectively. No. That's, I think that's the highest amount of SCVs I've ever seen in a Terran game. Does uh, blink away there with one of his battle cruisers. Yeah. I don't like. Oh my god. I think this is going to be game over. Of course, we still have a battle cruiser desperately trying to bring the army back, but Nathan just doesn't have anything. His supply is in SCVs, <laughs> clearly. But man, if he had pushed either earlier with the same supply before those Hydras and Vipers were ready, or if he had just simply turtled, I think there would have been yeah. better moves. But pushing out like he did and getting a. Uh, Maybe even caught a little bit by surprise. He was hoping maybe the Vipers weren't out yet. A few yeah, more BCs and perhaps everything could have been different. Final of Ducks are being used as uh, these tanks are getting picked off as well. And there really isn't that much left for the Tanius other than a whole lot of SUVs. Yeah. 
Oh god, 91. He's been watching too many Day9 dailies, man. It's like, <laughs> always build workers. Nate is like, aye aye, Commander, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop. GG, well played. Alright then. Ace match it is, and it's gotta be Neeb. Mm -hmm. But that was, once again, quality entertainment. Kudos to Blyder, because every now and then you face a bizarre build, and it can really spiral out of control. Yeah. And I just, I can't stop thinking about what would have happened if Nate would have been able to get a cancel on the Spire the first time. Right? If you get one cancel on it, that means the Corruptors are going to be so much later. Queens don't want to fight a BC at all. Exactly. Oh, what only could have been. What a game! Yeah, I really thought he was going to go for it too once he's got with the Hellions. But I guess we're seeing a pretty pivotal moment here is hold on his third base. But by this time, the third base was already kind of late anyway. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the Widow Mines, of course, with their friendly fire, helping out the Lings a little bit. The sick thing SCVs. is that this was that moment where Nate, I think, lost like 18 SCVs. And I was like, ah, oh, I wonder how many has left. 66. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the cool snipes of the battle cruisers are always fun to look at. But by that time, also, Bly had 2,500 minerals. So... These are just, they're really cool looking moves, but past the first seven minutes, cool moves aren't going to cut it. And it would have been sick if he was able to use some of those extra minerals that he was floating from time to time or from all the extra SUVs that he built. If that would have just been dumped into Hellions all yeah. the time, because I felt whenever he sent Hellions across the map, he was getting quite some work done. Yeah, the roaches, but, there's only so many of them. They're mm -hmm. always in the wrong position. Or, you know, they, they can only defend so much, you know, and it's just get really, really long, but... Uh, uh, yeah. If only he's all over the place, right? Like, I'm sure the Twitch chat was going insane when the Battle Cruisers went into that natural. It looked kind of hopeful, and I agree. That Spire snipe, he wasn't taking the Battle Cruisers that seriously. He was like, well, I'll just get a Spire, and I'll be yeah. okay. If that sniped, he wasn't building any more Queens, and didn't have a Hydrazen on the way. That would have been huge. Yeah, it would have taken forever to get an answer to BCs. And then I think that Nate's going to have a much easier time in just... Because uh, he would do a lot more economic damage, and that means he yeah. would be able to go up to three bases a lot faster and stuff. Yeah. Either way, Bly does it. He evens up the score for Ukraine, which means that we will go to the deciders match. Which nation will advance to the quarterfinals? Is it going to be Ukraine or USA? We're waiting for the announcement of the final player, but you already said it, and you know, every now and then we can tea recraft about maybe there is a valid argument, but if you have Neep on your team, <laughs> it has to be Neep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it has to be Neep. I mean... Puck, uh, unfortunately, did not look strong enough yeah. to be like, well, you know, maybe it could be like a snipe here, but... Oh, it's Arknog tweeting at us. Here <laughs> it come, boys. Nate with the sombrero. It's a picture that was taken in uh, Washington, D.C. during oh, one really? of the Red Bull events back then. That was a fantastic one. The one that Bama won. I kind of remember that. Uh, with all the, the cartoon animations and stuff. So not the, uh, oh. not the silly Archon tournament, but I mean the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the a one great with tournament. The, uh, that, like, that was actually a really cool theater. I was yeah. there, of course, living near DC, and they had like the giant uh, posters yep. of the players yeah. on the other side of the wall. That, that was, was actually a super cool setup. Yeah, that was actually, I think, of that year, that was probably my favorite tournament of the year. And I think oh, yeah? the, the games were great as well. Scarlet had some fantastic games in the tournament. Yep. Uh, Trap, I believe, had great games. Yeah. yeah. And obviously there was another uh, Bomber versus Pold moment with all the Bomber's medevacs. Pole. Yep. Yeah, that was awesome. It had a lot of my favorite uh, Koreans, actually. So not, not yeah. Bomber vs. Bomber and Pulse, was to there. be honest, but I don't know was there, too. Yeah. But uh, there was Trap, and there was uh, one of the Terrans that we had grown to love, and I f actually figured it was. Maybe uh, yeah, Bomber? I know. Uh, he made semi-final Cure. Cure, yeah, yeah, exactly. Cure and Trap, both for yeah. uh, Genera, I guess, at the time. Like, one of my favorite players. Mm -hmm. It was an awesome tournament. But we're about to find out. It Yeep. is neat. All right, so that means uh, I'm not actually sure. Are we going to another commercial break or are we just going to jump into the Deciders match? Oh, we're not. We're getting ready. So it's just going nice. to happen, guys. You guys don't have to uh, post the resident sleepers in Twitch chat like you always do <laughs> when you hear me start my final line. All right, we'll be right back. This time we won't be right back. We're just going to jump into the game as soon as they're ready. Huh, what do you think, Neep versus Bly? Bly has been looking really good today in, I think, both games against Neep. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think it can still be Bly's mm -hmm. to win, but I also think that Neeb, I mean, <sighs> that Daybreak game was, I don't know, it, it was it was a little weird. It, like, it did definitely snowball. Uh, looks like people still think USA is going to win, so way to go. Way to vote right, guys. But uh, no, I think Neeb can definitely, like, you know, just tweak a few things here and there and not have that same situation arise. I mean, kudos to Bly for getting those links across the map and then just snowballing, you know, deciding to go for more roaches. But I think Neeb can have a better defense than that. He usually has a better defense than that. It is Habitation Station, by the way, correct? 
Because that's, that's, that's the only map we haven't seen yet. <clears throat> that's what I was thinking. Like, what is uh -huh. the last map? So Happy Sensation was actually, funnily enough, the reason they sent out Nate first yesterday, apparently. Mm -hmm. They did not, uh, need did not want to play on that map against Bly. But I don't know. There's something to be said about, you know, just letting him take the map and do what you expect him. Because at least you expect it. <laughs> yeah, keep the tweets coming. Hashtag NW4. We love hearing from you guys. We love seeing pictures of how you are watching Nation Wars. I think a picture is required if you want the tweet to be uh, posted on the broadcast. Actually, no, the Muslim just had text. Yeah, the there bottom. was one or two yeah. that was only text. So every now and then, uh, but obviously with a picture, you have much better odds. So if you want to have your moment of fame, it's also a great way to increase your Twitter following. Like, Heck yeah. If you show a great picture and it's going to be posted here on the broadcast, people are going to be like, ah, I was looking for a few new people to follow. Yeah, plus you get internet famous, you know, like we recognize so many people have already tweeted at us, mm -hmm. like Arknog and Boris, and all, or Borsty rather. <laughs> Boris, <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Boris from uh, Yuri's Revenge. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Uh, well, the uh, map is Happy Sensation, so confirmed. And that is uh, uh, a little bit scary for that gold base. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, I think it's very hard to theory craft on this map. If I was Neep, and I think that's the way that a lot of Protoss players would approach this map against a very scary Zerg, is to go one gate, Stargate, then two more gates. Because that is you don't die against all ins with that opening. That's in general the best way to do it. But it could be something else, as Kevin, our observer, is already showing us. It all comes down to this game on Habitation Station. Will it be USA or will it be Ukraine? Well, in the top left, as the red Protoss, he is Neeb. Over here on the right top side of Habitation Station, can he do what happened to his nation yesterday? The reverse all kill, it is Bly. Of course, in the back, I'm hearing people shout like "USA, USA," and it's just like "USA" is just like a perfect, you know, three letters to chant. You know, there's no like, what is it? UKR, UKR. <laughs> sound right? Or BLY, BLY, I suppose. <laughs> He's hiding the drone while he already took an expand as well on the right side. This oh, time, he will geez. not be able to get it down. I think it's very well, important for Neep that he gets a Ooh. second. Uh, if I was Neep, I'd get a second probe here oh. as quickly as possible. Oh my yeah. God, that was close two times right there. Very sticky stuff by Bly, but Neeb on top of things, definitely looking at his natural, wondering when that was going to come down. Still can't sleep, can't skip a beat here, because if that hatch goes down, then it just once again becomes a little bit awkward. Maybe by now it's a tiny bit too late to truly really worry about it. Go. Even gets the drone, all right. So this is the first time that Neeb does not have to worry about that hatchery block and does not have to worry about pulling nine or something, even 11 probes early on. Yep. Well, Bly, uh, yeah, still doesn't have that gas quite yet, but Sneeb is looking to potentially even deny a drone coming down to that natural. Expecting that to be taken. Uh, I don't know. I, so, like, no gold base shenanigans yet, but it is more, of course, if the game does go on longer, Bly could provide that mid-game aggression and then go into that gold base. I mean, that mid-game aggression worked so well on Daybreak. That choice to go for the counterattack with Lings into the Roach Flood, it just demolished Neeb's uh, Adept's Resonating Glaive's push. Yeah, Neeb is actually giving Bly a taste of his own recipe as he's being very annoying. Uh, I do think this is very nice for Neeb. If he opens up with either one or two Adepts, um, the fact that, you know, Bly was forced to expand where he actually expanded, that means that those drones are going to be a little bit exposed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get lucky and pick off a drone or two that's in transit as well because it has to go pretty oh. far south. Stalker is going to be the follow-up, and I'm still expecting a Stargate just because I think this is such a good Stargate map, and it's also a great map for uh, Zerg all-ins. And, you know, it's so small, so Stargate makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and it is a Stargate, it's a good call. So the Adepts did kind of risky go into that natural. I mean, he saw that there was, I think, six lings, but maybe assuming that Bly would do what he does, right. which is send most of them across the map to the Good. Stalker and help take care of that. Yeah, one ling actually has extra surface area now, but then yet it's only yeah, three lings. Three oh, lings is say. enough, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I thought he was going to micro a little bit more. Maybe he underestimated the value of those links, too. Oh. It is so close. He really wants to save that Stalker, uh, but he, does, he has to that the no. probe's doing it. The Ling and the Dream! He's gonna run. He's oh. gonna run to that shield. Oh that my shield. god! Oh. <laughs> One HP! What a boss! Good. What a boss! Well, that was. <clears throat> okay, now. But, um, so that aside, Neep did lose quite a bit of mining time there. But the good news for Neep is that Bly did not scout that Stargate yet. Or did the Overlord see it? Ah, oh, the Overlord must have seen it, right? Can take a look? Mm. Oh, he's sleeping wow. on the job. Okay, he's sending there it he forward now. Now he knows. Yeah, a little bit of supply block. I guess, um, well, the pylons are on the way. So the Oracle and Adept are going to pop out here. 
We'll see if he goes two oracles and then void ray. I think the last time they played, he went oracle and then void ray right off the bat. Uh, the roach warren's already on the way for Bly. I'd like to Maybe see double oracle. Yeah, double oracle. I think is pretty good. Uh, there's multiple and little angles that you can uh, choose from with two oracles where you can just one shot a couple of drones over and over again. Right now Neep's obviously in a pretty sweet economic spot. We remember the game on Daybreak for instance, he was down a couple workers for quite some time. Mm. Uh, now he's actually up 10 and he may still be able to get a few kills with his oracle even though there are spore crawlers. Well, apparently not of the natural. Well, I guess this was his third base, so there's not a lot of drones to pick off here. Barely saves that third one and barely saves the oracle. Not have been... Uh I don't know lost. He does have a second one for scouting, of course, but now you have two. You can actually get a lot of damage done. Voider is also on the way now as well. I mean, Bly's not going to get many opportunities to go for Overlord drops, if that is his plan. I mean, it was so effective against Puck, but uh, didn't really get to do any uh, versus Neeb last time. Is going to try right now, apparently. He's already sent his lings over to that oh, Overlord. Not a great early game for Bly at all this time. He's been down just a few too many workers for the majority of the game. This, however, may even things up a tiny yeah. bit. The Mothership Core is about to pop. I'm not sure if it's in the main. Yes, it is. And there is a pylon as well. Oh, Bly really needs to do a little bit of damage somewhere. Uh, if he's paying attention, just instantly pull the probes. Okay, loses two right off the bat, three right off the bat. Five. Probably a four and a fifth one there, too. That's very unfortunate. The militia core, which is a second, second later, is in position for this. Now, the Void Ray can go ahead and clean up that Overlord, so there's not going to be any more damage done by dropped lings, but six probes is pretty good. Yeah, that's nice. Bly really needed that, though. I mean, it wasn't for free. Actually, gets another one there. Wow. wow. Uh, a couple of these adapts a little late to the party, but the tech is late for Bly, at least he's on three bases, that's up and running. He has plus one melee that's about to finish up, that's something that works in his favor. And obviously the follow-up tag of Neep is a little bit late because of his defensive opening, the one gate stargate into two extra gates. So at least he does, uh, Bly doesn't have to worry about Archons or you know, anything like that anytime soon. Yeah. No real threat to the third base this time either. I mean, again, going back to that Daybreak game, it was all about the mid game. Here we actually get to that lair. Whoa, was Roachborn canceled? I guess right. it was. I, I don't think he never made one, though. I'm pretty sure he had one starting on the reduction tab, but it could be going crazy. Oh. So the point is, he's getting one now, I suppose. But yeah, the lair is finishing up, and it's just they actually are getting the three bases. Now the question for me, of course, is Bly, does he actually try and be aggressive in his expansion to take that gold base, or does he just take the more safe fourth base down to the south? I mean, it's Bly, so I mean, he takes chances, he, he's aggressive, but... Uh, even against, you know, non-positional units, because you think of tanks, you think of Colossus, of course, then don't take that gold base, but even against, like, a basic gateway army, it's still pretty dangerous to do. Mm, well, this one queen was a little too far out of position, and the oracles oh, nice. are able to pick it up. He has to be careful with that one oracle, because this time there is a spore in the main, but he is. So this is very nice. Actually, need doing a little bit of damage. He also uh, saw all the links what, that were <laughs> produced by Bly. <laughs> I feel like he was trying to box one of those oracles or something like that. That was a bit of a weird micro right there, but... Yeah, like I said, the third base is pretty secure. The army's there, photon overcharges are there as well, I believe, and just uh, also starting to break down those rocks, which I always forget exists, but pro game is pretty on point. That's a good job there by, uh, by Neep as well, having units in the right position. He's going to try to take the gold. Perhaps feels like he needs to make something happen. <laughs> we see the first seven Hydralisk on the way. The Void Ray will actually get a cancel on this base. Yeah, well, it was pretty able to fly to do that with the Void Ray right there. He probably assumed that it had left. I'm not sure if he saw it or not. But. Yeah. Drone also goes down, and Neeb's going to say good job, Void Ray, and send him back home. And now he has a Warp Prism. He could try and, and poke, but it's always a little bit dangerous to do that. But he could also just try and pick up a couple of the depths. I love the Sim City. He saw the amount of circlings that were produced, and obviously you always have to worry about a couple of links morphing into Banes as well. And if you've got no Sim City here, they will just run into your mineral line over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, Storm is pretty quick here. Yeah. We already have High Templar, something that Bly did, I believe, see in the army, and generally it's not a mistake. Uh, if they do not have them turning to Archons immediately, then it does mean they're waiting to get energy for Storm, and that's just going to be super interesting. I mean, I love Storm. I'm always surprised, I suppose, when we realize that Storm just sometimes is never even researched in a PvZ, but this early against Hydra Baneling, those could be crucial. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic, I think, right now for Neve. I just feel like pretty much from start to finish, this time not having to worry about Hatch not having to worry about the late nexus, you can just see how much better Neve's economy has been. The only time this ever got close, and I think this is the perfect move by Bly, by the way, going up to a Lurker Den, I feel like that's one of the only things he can do from this position, because it feels like they've just been making minor trades back and forth. That's a nice pickoff as well, getting that prism. Doesn't have to worry about that one for a little while longer. Yeah. But maybe uh, he can get a cancel on the fort now. There's just too much Protoss there. Yeah, too few links. 
So, I mean, it's going to be four base versus four, and sure, Bly going up to Lurker Den is, is something better than, I think, yeah, sending Hydra bailing into a bunch of storms, but this is not the Bly that we usually get to see. This is the Bly in a macro stage, which he is a decent macro player. He's not, like, you know, always all in and that's it. That's his, his entire game plan, but he usually doesn't bode well, especially if he's facing a very strong macro player like Neeb. I mean, it's going to come down to basically, like, you know, making sure Neeb doesn't do any stupid silly mistakes basically like run into the lurkers which sometimes happens but i'm just not expecting it from a need that's on point yeah like archon immortal can be fantastic great storm there connecting with so many hydrolisk at once wow. i'm not exactly sure why bly showed all these units he's gonna buy maybe he's just buying time and he's faking out a little bit a couple of zealots taking a nice detour <laughs> i'm gonna sneak to the other side of the map and bly's gonna get punished for not taking out those rocks yeah I mean, Bly couldn't even get that snipe on the High Templar. That was uh, actually quite bad. But he's going up to... This is what I would think it would be much better. I was very concerned he would stick on Phoenix. the Lurker tech, as uh, Protoss, is, I guess, six months ago would do, and just get as many Lurkers as possible and dial to the Immortals. But trying to reach towards the Greater Spire, I think, is going to be the better move overall. But the army's already moving out. There's a lot of Immortals, a lot of Storms in there as well. Yeah. A lot of storms, whoa. It's still a tiny bit scary for Neep to go super far. I mean, he's doing a lot of damage already, so I think he's quite happy with the way that all of this is going. But he has no War Prism here. And if you have no War Prism committing too much, it's always a tiny bit scary. But he looks at his arm and he's like, well, I actually think I can fight this, at least for now. And these storms have been doing quite a bit of damage. Neep is up 40 supply. The first Lurkers are out, and that should keep Bly safe. Well, I mean, just two lurkers, I actually don't yeah. think it's enough against all those Immortals and Archons. Yeah, exactly. The only thing they're helping against is making sure the High Templars maybe don't reach a little bit too far forward like this. But even then, you know, Neeb tried, and he's trying to get those Banelings popped so his army could move in. This gold base was for Fitz, and I mm. think Bly knew that. And he is, again, just trying to get to that Greater Spire. But at this point, he goes for six more lurkers, doesn't really have the gas to even start the Greater Spire. And of course, Corruptor's beyond that. Or actually, doesn't have enough for Greater Spire, but Corruptor's beyond that might be a little bit questionable because Neve is not giving up this position. If he has to keep dedicating to units right now, the Greater Spire won't go into effect. Ah, oh, good storm there as well, connecting with the majority of these base. And it's just a couple lurkers. That's pretty much all that's left for Bly. And to make things even worse, yes, the Greater Spire is on the way, but at the same time, double Stargate Fleet Beacon. Neep is playing this very, very well. This time he never fell behind economically, and you can just see him take control of this game. Yeah, at this point it really is just Bly, or uh, Neep rather thinking, what can Bly do to win this game? How could I screw up this game? There's been a couple of cases, not gonna lie, where Neep has thrown Immortals, uh, not even A moving, right? Or the High Templars going for something silly like that. But I think he's grown a lot as a player, and I think he's definitely been on point today specifically. Uh, I think he's very well aware that he's not going to do that. He's not going to lose over Team USA. He's actually an exact revenge on Bly. I think the best thing for Bly would be not to make a great Aspire. And this is something that sort of has done so often in the past, where you know he makes a great Aspire, but then actually just attacks with Mass, Ling, yeah. Hydra, a couple of Lurkers and stuff. Well, maybe not that often Lurkers, or even just going into Ultras. But if he starts making Brood Lords, that's just going to get shut down by these Tempests that are already on the way. Yeah, not that many Broodlords are right off the bat either. The Tempest will definitely be in high enough numbers. So much Sag Defense. Steve has just had a lot of minerals to burn on Sag Defense, so very nice to defend it there. A Ling and a Dream! <laughs> it's gonna... No. Oh. Almost get it. Wow, the Immortal's actually gonna leave. <laughs> Saved by like a billion Immortal yeah. Brethren right there. Jeez, you've got a lot of Immortals. Um, of course, the, it's going to be more about the Tempest soon enough than once Bly realizes that. Because I don't think Bly's really had a lot of scouting in the main base, natural base, as the game has gone on to 13, 14 minutes. But uh, once he sees that it's Tempest, I just don't know what he's really going to think he can do, except uh, just buy more time, I guess. Well, he's like, just wait so until he's broke, maxed out. Man. He's so broke, and he doesn't really have a whole lot of gas, so he can't get any Vipers out. I mean, you could normally say if he gets a couple of Vipers out, maybe he can get lucky with a few of ducks, yeah. and then um, pick them up with the remaining Corruptors, but he doesn't have that, and he also has to worry about feedback, because there are still these yep. High Templars alive for Neep. Exactly, like the High Templars really do make it almost impossible to look at the situation. Storms, feedback on potential Vipers, even if there's Fungals, of course, feedbacks would work too. I just, uh, I'm not sure. Of course, Bly with these Ling attacks, attempts at Ling surrounds, or Ling run buys rather, it's really nice move. It's something he should be doing since he was banking more minerals than gas, too. 
but it's only buying so much time. Neeb really doesn't have to retreat entirely with his army. He still has enough supply every now and then to warp in at home. But that's one thing it does do. Like, it buys time. I really think that multiple moments in this game, if Neeb wanted to finish it, I think he could have straight up finished it. Yeah. And now Neeb is still in a fantastic position, but there is still a tiny bit hope left for Blyze. He's able to pick off this Nexus as well with these links. I mean, I'm not sure if more Broodlords is the answer, but I guess you got to do something. There are the first Vipers. I mean, Neep is still very far ahead, but Bly is slowly but steady going up in army supply, so that means there is a chance. Yep, yeah. Maxed out army versus maxed out army. It comes down to position. It comes down to a couple of key spells being missed. Maybe some cool micros. I think a couple of the high Templars. And I guess Bly could be back in it but not a very good bank for him. We have Immortals being sacrificed here. They could definitely snipe the hatchery if the Hydras don't help. The Immortal uh, the immortal run by, it's pretty casual. Yeah. It's gonna do actually quite well against the Hydras, not that well against these Zerglings, as one Immortal is trapped. And Neep is buying a little bit of time with it. These barriers helping out as well. He might actually get in a uh, Lurker. You gotta be careful with those Lurkers. Yeah, he's trying to focus fire it. Yeah, one Lurker he's will fall, I think. He's <laughs> actually not doing very much yeah. else on the other side of the map, so yeah, focus firing on those Lurkers is pretty good. Neep certainly is taking this slow. I absolutely agree. There's a couple of moments where he could have already won this game, but he is very aware of just you know, not throwing the game away. That it, uh, I guess it could maybe backfire if this game goes on for even three more minutes. Yeah, I mean, he's going to go about, for the Golden Armada. Yeah, I was talking about the game ending, like, you know, that 13-minute mark, I think. It's almost 16. He is going to go for as much late game tech as possible here. The good move as well is that he's getting a Dark Shrine, so in case Bly would overrun him on the ground with Zerglings and perhaps eventually Ultras, because I thought we saw an Ultralisk Cavern, unless I'm not mistaken, or maybe it got cancelled. I thought yeah. I saw one. But, uh, well, at least he will always have a couple of Dark Templars, and then there's not going to be any detection for Bly, because mm -hmm. Bly has no answer right now against this Golden Armada force of Neep. The only thing we still need is some carriers, and I have the <laughs> feeling that Neep is going to give us is the full USA WWE performance here. We saw Nate with BCs. We got Neep with carriers. I was going to say I'm waiting for that mothership. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The mothership core is still alive and obviously helping against the defenses right now. Zealot's getting to that gold base, which is still pretty healthy for being lost earlier on. Immortals, too, being sacrificed once again. Going to go for that snipe on the base. And this is all good moves. Why, again, not banking so much money? You know, up to a thousand now is much better than before, but actually he's not even so maxed out, so I'm wondering why he's making so much. These four or five cells that these two immortals have killed so much. They killed the base, they killed a whole bunch of drones, they killed a whole bunch of links. It's a very nice little combination that he's got going for himself there. Eventually these immortals will get surrounded. Those corruptors are like your bad friends, they just look at it. And yeah. Like, ah, sorry bro, can't sorry, do anything. Buddy. Well, I guess now Neeb is looking for the kill move. 17 cannons, by the way. I want to get. I want to take a look. <laughs> Neeb is building a wall. No, up, up, up. Yep. There we go. Oh my god. There's a pretty famous game, or infamous, everyone to call it, of Snoot versus Neeb, where he did <laughs> literally build a wall of cannons, and then another wall, and then maybe <laughs> even another wall, but I don't think it's really necessary here. Bly is at that point where he can remax four times with mass ultras. Stasis activated there and a couple of the links is... I mean, what is Bly supposed to do? How can Bly engage this army? I mean, normally you could say like maybe with a whole... Oh, Burrow, uh, that would actually be sick. I don't think he has Burrow, correct? He's getting infestors. Would be so awesome to see maybe Neural Parasite being Ooh. used. Like, that is one great comeback cool, uh, too. And I actually think it's incredibly good as well. Yeah. If you get like infestors and queens, if there are no disruptors, that can pretty much always work. Yeah, I um, mean, it's really going to come down to uh, some type of spellcaster yeah. helping out Bly here. Right now, it is mostly about those vipers. He only has a couple of fungals, but uh, those high templars are scarier spellcasters, in my opinion. The feedback, the storms, he's got to have a lot of storms, those high templars, by now. They haven't really been being used. I, this is, it's slow, not much is actually happening, but Neeb is absolutely still winning. Yeah, the only way I can see Neeb lose this game. If he just like lets Bly get oh, ultra geez. rich. Good feedbacks oh there God. as well on the Vipers. How many Vipers was that? Like three? Oh <laughs> it was like a slam dunk right there. That <laughs> one high Templar is such a boss. Right. Oh jeez. Well that actually might just be it. That might be the trigger here. There's a couple more Vipers, but I'm not sure where they are. The Archon goes underneath those uh, Corruptors. The Storms go on the Corruptors. Even without the help of the Storms, we have just enough Tempest and Void Rays. This is looking like it's it. Bly yep. has 38 army supply and it's all in fungals. <laughs> Ends up losing that base as well. There's plenty of money in the bank, but Bly was just a little too far behind. 
The Fungals are great, but there is nothing else. I mean, there's a couple of Corruptors, but that's not going to be enough. Against the Mothership, against the Void Rays, against the Tempest. It seems like it's USA that will join Norway as the first two nations to qualify for the quarterfinals of the StarCraft Two Nation Wars. Mm, almost nailed it. Well, I said USA would win, right? <laughs> and it was probably because of Nib, which actually ended up happening. But man, Bly had such a good performance, this group. I mean, I'm kind of sad that he had to be the one to lose. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I loved like a lot of these guys in this group. I mean, Snoot getting out. Hooray, if Bly got out, hooray, if Neva got out, extra hooray, but mm -hmm. it is going to be the USA. And a little bit of love for Australia as well. Of course, I mean, yeah. All, yes. all the guys from Dino on there. It all started with this cute little micro battle in the beginning of this game, and the stalker that just refused to die. <laughs> I mean, we're in the Christmas spirit. Die Hard is a great movie on Christmas Eve, and it's going to be featured by this stalker. As it looked around, gets one hit. So I have no idea how to get the shot off. Barely got that shield. You just saw the shield yeah, got one that's HP. That made it I love, by the way, how we had a 25-minute game on Habitation Station. It's like the highlight. <laughs> is one <laughs> stalker <laughs> that survived against the three links. But yeah, I think early on, uh, it just felt this game that Blind never got his economy going. He was just always right. behind. He never got his game going, I would say, too. Like, you know, he always has some type of shenanigans going on. I mean, the Ling drop did a good amount of damage, but that still wasn't him in control, and then him not in control. Yeah, he just uh, lost to a very good macro Protoss in the form of Neeb, a very cautious Neeb, I would say, mm -hmm. as well. Like, he took a long time to finish that game. So Neeb is currently... Uh, he got two all kills, and then he got a yes. couple of wins as well in one of the... I don't know, Neep is probably at like 11 wins or something as well. He just got eight. Uh, well, he's got four wins today. Well, he would have had to be in all four wins every single time. So yeah, he's like so 12. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but I think <laughs> even in one of the... No, they lost 4 once. And yeah, they won everything else. So oh, yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> we're gonna look Either way, well, we'll take a look Why at that later. <laughs> what we do know is that Neep is... Uh, Neep did some serious stat spanning today. <laughs> he got eight wins on the board, one loss today, eight and one today. Of course, he did lose one map against Bly. But this means that Norway and USA are going to be our first two nations in the quarterfinals. Nice. Um, I think the two nations that most people predicted, but it was far from easy for both of them. Yeah, no, this is a difficult group. I think it was a surprising group as well in the start. So a lot of predictions were completely wrong, like the USA versus Ukraine first sets. But this was a really fun past couple of days. And, of course, looking forward to the new year with the next group. Yeah, that will unfortunately continue. I think January 2nd it is. Not exactly sure which group is up first. I hope it's uh, the, the Dutch group, obviously. Of Netherlands, course. Germany, Finland, and I believe Taiwan. I mean, yeah. that's just fantastic. I mean, you've got three oh, great God. nations, and then you've got the nation of Haas. I mean, it doesn't really <laughs> yeah. get much better than that. I was like, well, Taiwan. Oh, that's why yeah. you're so excited. Yeah. So I believe that we're going to throw it over to an interview. We should have Team USA on a Skype call. And obviously, we're very curious to see what the three boys have to say about you know, their qualification to the quarterfinals. Thank you, Roddy and Zombie Grub. And obviously, Roddy, thank you. And uh, good, good, good job to you. This is your last game. All right. This time, this time it should Is be it good? good. All right, all right. It was just about a bottom not being pushed. So <laughs> that, that was that easy. So once again, <laughs> congratulations to Team America. Congratulations to Roddy and Zombie Grub for the last cast of 2016. Thank you so much for being with us. Poof, how are you? I'm super fine, super excited about the next matches. Uh, as you said, those are the last matches of 2016. It's been a great year, uh, Legacy of the Void wise, uh, and uh, also for uh, O Gaming. But uh, uh, since it's the last show, uh, we are airing live right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was super pumped. I got uh, sort of uh, an erection. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. During of course. the match. With Bly and uh, Nathanius. Oh, yeah. Bly, Bly was, was really, really hot. I'm, re I'm, re I'm really expecting uh, a lot from this interview. I really need to know where he gets his move. Is it like, I don't know, from uh, an ancient temple in Tibet? Or I don't know. Uh, 
You can ask him yourself. Netanyahu <laughs> is with us, the captain of Team America. You guys made it to the round of eight. This was hard. This was tough. It was a long road, but uh, I don't know. Like, knee prevailed in the end. Yeah, thank God for that, right? Yeah. Neeb. Uh, based, based God Neeb. <laughs> putting us up. I think the Muslim already tweeted out like a really nice picture of like Atlas holding up the world and said it's just, it's pretty much just me and Puck and America. Um, definitely a great job carrying. This match was, at least for me, it was pretty fun. I still have a little bit of that, uh, of that adrenaline in from my match, which was obviously a bit crazy. Um, I know it's late over in Europe, so I wanted to give a good fight and help buy Neeb a little bit of time to get ready for his match, since uh, I know it's very late over in Ukraine as well. But I think the guys are really happy. I know apparently Neeb is not only very soft-spoken, he probably won't make any super aggro tweets after this, yeah. but he didn't, uh, doesn't, didn't have like much of a setup to come here and, and actually be interviewed himself. Obviously, he deserves uh, as much attention right now for this victory as anybody else in America. Uh, you're really good with impression. Could you do a Neeb impression since Neeb is not here with us? Could, could, could you try something? How would he, uh, how would he sound right now? <laughs> that's for, I mean, that's like the worst one you could ask for. Huh? <laughs> how would Neeb? I'd probably just be like, yeah, I'm really happy we won. Um, Blyze is a really good player, but I mean, you know, Tempest, right? Like, that's pretty much all Neeb would say. <laughs> that's that's, a, that, that's it, a good Neeb. He's, he's a man of very few words, so I asked him, I was like, do you want me to, I mean, you don't have a camera or mic, I'm like, do you want me to shit talk a bit for you? He's like, he's like, no, no. I was like, do you want me to float my buildings to buy you even more time? He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, just, just do whatever you want, it's okay. I'm like, so, all right. So, Nathanias, you're one match away from uh, coming to Paris uh, to uh, round of four. Uh, what do you think about that? Are you going to train? Are you guys going to train during, the, uh, during Christmas? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I play those builds every day. I'm very confident in them. When I came into this match, I, I mean, obviously I haven't won, right? But I like to think that, you know, as I play more whatever broadcasted matches, I get a little less nervous. But I think my builds are good. I think my strategies were mostly fleshed out. I didn't die to any early attacks or anything. But uh, I saw someone from O Gaming tweeted out that you guys had like a big bag of baguettes or something for people to eat. That that right there is what I'm really excited about. Yeah, we will, we will I have, miss. We will have all yeah. the baguettes you need if you actually make it yeah. to the round of four. That, I promise you that. I promise you. And that that's that's the good shit. That's one of one of my favorite parts of uh, when we make it to the top four for sure. All right. Uh, do we have anything more to add to this? Like, do you, thank you, Natanias, you for the show. Thank you, Natanias, for the show. I hope uh, I hope you uh, uh, you continue on the yeah the on the hype train. You know, yeah, the dang the meme, the meme bills. Like f for now, it hasn't worked, but still, like you're still yeah, in well, the round of eight. It, it is the way we of the drunken it. master, right? Yeah. So you we've, you gotta we've gotten we've gotten closer and closer every step of the yeah. way. Um, if I had, I won't lie, if I had known that they were going to send out Demaga first, I might have, I might have asked to go first. I've ha actually had some good games against him lately, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, you, I, w I will keep working on it. And the next time you see Battle Cruisers, hopefully they'll be with the victory screen at the end. Thank you very much, Natanias. Have a good day and Neem congratulations Thanks, to guys. Nibs and to Puck also to your whole team. Uh, you did a really great job. Thank you, guys. Thank see you. Again. All right, so that ends Nation Wars for, for 2016, but we will be back as soon as possible in 2017. And actually, sure. it's super close from here because it's going to be on the 2nd of January. We can actually show you a little bit about the groups, I believe. We can show you the, the next group that will be played. Germany will be playing. France will be playing in team uh, in a group. Uh, Poland, there will be gr group South Korea, obviously. There's a lot of sick games coming in. Germany will be the first group of 2017 on 2nd and 3rd of January. Thank Germany. you very much, guys. And uh, as we said, it is the last show for 2016. Ogaming, c'est le dernier show de Ogaming pour 2016. Merci à tous d'avoir été là cette année. Continuez le jeu vidéo. Et à très bientôt.